ね。違うんだよ。Hey, come on, come on. Began. A 
princess in a tower is just a bird in a cage. Kneel before your queen. It won't take long, I promise. What is up everyone, Liz here with your weekly dose of NACT recap. Regular season of the NACT, that's done and dusted. Playoffs kicked off last weekend with four teams sending a clear message to the NACT community with their clean sweeps that Vegas were coming for you. Sadly, not much discussed between GG vs Legacy and BTK vs Bloodhounds except the fact that there are reasons why GG and BTK are crowd favorites and those reasons are going to become clear as we enter into the later stages of the NACT Spring. Huge shout out though to NA's pride and joy Mobazane for clinching his first Savage and MVP of the week this season. Let's tune in on BTK's hype behind the scenes. Discord ult. Nice. Uh, I mean, any flickers? Yeah, nice it's you. Extra. Oh, oh sh**. Holy f savage. Oh my what god, you're getting, you're getting that interview. You're getting that interview right there. Savage. Me alone. I got it, I got it. Savage, no savage, flicker, savage. no flicker. I got it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wait, America! <laughs> I'm doing the America thing right now. Dude. In the clash of the top challengers, Area 77 brought the heat with Yureshi pulling out some beautiful flanks left and right. CC on his hands is simply built different, which makes me wonder when is Yureshi dropping his CC die? The other team that toppled BTK in Red Season, aka the Nighthorde, seemed a little thrown off by their roster adjustments. Despite adding in Assassin Master Zero, Nighthorn got struck hard by Divas Activity's botch infused the power train. Zero's mechanical prowess seems to make him the go-to sub for NA pros, securing himself yet another last-minute playoff ticket like his Area 77 run in NACT Fall. But if we've learned anything this season, is that team synergy trumps raw skills just because of how close the NA Pro League is right now. On a side note, we can officially confirm that Zeke and Naisu are practically twins separated at birth. Just don't tell Naisu, because clearly Zeke got the better mustache gene. I hope you guys are as pumped as I am for playoffs week 2. Can A77 ride the momentum to avenge GG and turn an almost match win into an actual victory in the books? And what about the quote unquote orphan match featuring fathers and sons? Will Joy Bosch complete the Fallout Brothers to take down a new BTK and Savage Bobs of Mobile Zane? Or will Yato be eating his words up after poking the sleeping bear who's either on his clippable stream hiatus or just simply matured from drama era? Zane has three heroes. I hope Zane can learn some assassin because like can't play anything else. Oh my goodness! I don't know. We shall find out this weekend. Stay tuned for our next NACD broadcast coming to you live Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Host Liz, signing off.
違うんだよ。Hey, come on, come on. Today's the day, everyone, where legends clash and stories rewrite. Welcome to week two of the NACD Spring 2024 playoffs. We've got a veteran NACD champs hungry for glory against reigning champs who tout the throne for six seasons. And can the Fallout Brothers, the trio who's left behind, flip the script for BTK 3.0? 
It's a showdown out the ages unfolding before our eyes. And who better to cast the matches than our pro voice actor, private dancer, and NA's own pro player turned analyst, Yue. How are you boys doing today? I want to hear your hype. Dude, I'm about to jitter out of my chair. This entire week since last <laughs> week, knowing what matches are going to be happening here today, I've been so excited. I've been talking to people. Even yesterday, I was so hype about it. Today, I'm excited. It is finally the day for these top four teams in North America. Yeah, and you know, only two of these teams are going to be coming out on top in the upper bracket. The other two teams actually get sent down to the lower. And, you know, when they do get into those positions, it's, it's quite hard to climb up, you know. They, they have to really try really hard. So this is very key, important matches, especially leading up um, into the grand finals, which is going to be the offline thing. But, you know, Liz, there's two matches coming out today. Which one are you more excited about? Well, I'm <laughs> excited about whichever match is more exciting. So let's take a look at the schedule today <laughs> first. Private, why don't you take us through it? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be kicking off today with Gaming Gladiators taking on the original NACT winners way back two years ago, Area 77. And then it's going to be the Bloodthirsty Kings uh, taking on the team I've nicknamed the BTK Orphans, Devious Activity. Ooh, tough, tough Ooh, matches yes. for both of those teams, actually. You know, GG has been dominating every single game, and now they're going to be going up to an A77, which that, you know, A77 has had the momentum, especially in the last half of the round robin leading up to this. They've had great wins, and now they're looking to uh, push forward here to see if they could get the match on top of GG. You've got it. It is the veteran champs versus the current champs and the BTK 2.0 versus BTK 3.0, if we put it simply. So let's take a refresher at our playoffs bracket to really understand how the playoff stage takes off. So coming in with eight of the same rosters in regular season, but this week is a defining moment where somebody is going home. Today is the top the victor's bracket where it's going to be best out of fives and the best of out of threes is going to come when tomorrow's matches and somebody is going to go home in the lowest bracket the detailed bracket is as shown on the screen reflecting the team's regular season standings gg and btk had top standings of the regular season which makes them having an relatively easier bracket coming in last weekend but things are shaking up this weekend and only two teams in the end will advance to the offline grand finals that you just mentioned will be in las vegas coming in at may i mean that's something that i'm super excited about just to watch the matches yeah. <laughs> yeah, NACT returns uh, to Las Vegas. I mean, we've had some of the most memorable matches, and especially in that location was the most memorable where uh, BTK, against all odds, was able to defeat OP. So a lot of history uh, in that uh, in the HyperX arena. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Long Beach one was actually quite eventful for me, too. I know uh, when they did have it in <laughs> Vegas, I did throw, like, a little... Like a little gathering, a little watch party, and I know we had an opportunity to come up and say hi, especially when, you know, BTK came back and uh, reverse sweep there. So, you know, very, very good memories for the grand finals in Vegas. Hopefully this time I get to uh, come across and uh, visit because, you know, I was watching some of the vlogs from back then. You guys had a great, great time <laughs> over there. Yeah, it seems super, super exciting. The venue, the people and everything, and it's all coming together so let's take a look at the price pool of what our players are looking at two twenty five thousand dollars in diamonds are waiting our players and the champion will go home with ten thousand dollar cash prize and we've mentioned this before this season we also have a hundred dollars bonus for each win and a seasonal additional finals mvp prize for the goat of the season and the cherry on top for me personally is that the NACT will represent North America heading into the MSC, which is in the eSport World Cup, hyping up to be one of the biggest eSport events in a, in a, in a very well. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, it's there's so much. It, just the hype around MSC, it, we've been seeing it kind of ripple through North America. Uh, even just now, like with how competitive all of these teams have been, how much practice they've gotten in, this has been for me, the most competitive I've seen North America, especially here at the top that we've been witnessing so many backs and forth to the point that I can't even, I think I'm at the bottom of predictions right now just because of all of the surprises that all of these you teams have brought out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're both we're both down there <laughs> hand in hand <laughs> at the bottom of the predictions here, but that just shows you how surprising it's been here back and forth with a lot of these teams. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of these teams, they, uh, it, it really does show that they're preparing a lot. They're doing their homework. And especially with like a lot of the new coaches that are coming in. I know we have Midnight uh, from the PH area coming in to help out uh, some teams. I also know GG has some coaches too. So um, a lot of resources have been used for these teams to prepare to get onto, you know, the biggest stage in North America and to get on this biggest stage of the world and to be able to compete in this kind of like world-class bracket. And, um, you know, all these teams coming together. Once again, you talked about the prediction. It's been quite off even for me. You know, it's quite 50-50. <laughs> so uh, it's very exciting to see who will come out on top tonight. For sure. I mean, this season is the closest season we've got and also the biggest stage and the biggest prize pool in Mobile Legend history for the MSC. So that's got to be something that you're hyped up about. But we're jumping too ahead of ourselves because today's matches is going to be some of the most exciting matches of this season. So let's take a look at the first series of the night, Area 77 versus GG. Yes, I'm assuming now we talked about <laughs> the bracket, the um, roster coming in for GG. We have the usual, the five guys, the five boys who's always here. Nothing has changed about their roster. And interestingly enough for Area 77, nothing really changed as well. So we have two teams who are very confident with their lineup. Five Musketeers standing here. Shark, Zia, Hoon, Best Player, and Boy Chicken. Yes, arguably some of the top, and I would argue so like uh, many of these, number one or number two in their respective positions here in North America. They perform, and not just, I want to say, isolated in their own lane, but the synergy, their rotations. These are We're talking about guys who've been playing together for about two years now, uh, and they show that when, they, uh, when they're in their matches. So, And that's something that definitely needs to be watched out boy, uh, by their opponents, especially here by area 77 if they're hoping to be successful yeah no i mean a77 is up against a full team of veterans that have performed well has kind of like the experience uh backed up by it that has the placements that are backed up by these guys you know it, it is the ones and twos of each of the roles and it's the all-star team but this is going to be a five-man team right private so like even if these guys are in their perspective roles they do have to be able to have the synergy have the strategies have the patience to be able to take the game onto the next level and uh to find the victory especially in you know a, a tight series like this here Exactly. I mean, it's the, find the strategy, find the synergy. We saw GG play against Area 77 in their brother's season, and they had a pretty hard match against A77, even though they took the series home, right? So let's see if that's going to happen again today. Now, we might expect some roster just adjustments within the team for Area 77. So let's see if today Mark Cutie can come from his work to the lineup. Yes, we have Mark Cutie, a J Cutie, Iso, Tarzan, and Ureshi. Now, this season, the only shakeout that we saw with Area 77's roster is between Mar and their um, sub, right? But for GG, we don't even have a sub or a coach. <laughs> so <laughs> that's something that do you guys think is going to um, cost GG in, towards the long run? Well, I mean, GG have shown that uh, even Sans a coach, they are just some remarkable players. But, I mean, everybody knows the story of GG because they've been dominating for so long in North America. Area 77, though, I mean, we're talking about Yureshi, who has just been this, I want to say, dominating force on the team. And uh, even in the background, I want to talk a, a, a little bit, shine some lights on, I, I believe, Sir Rose, who's been doing the drafting for Area 77, which I feel like has been, has had, like, 
just a monumental effect on how well and how positive and confident that Area 77 has been going into a lot of these matches. And I feel like that's going to be the ultimate question with GG without uh, somebody exterior doing the drafting for them. or And how will that stack up against a team like Area 77 that I feel like is just as skilled, just as talented, but with somebody else there on the outside that can maybe see some things uh, from the outside on these drafts and maybe apply that to some of these games. Yeah, and I mean, you talked about Rose earlier, and Rose is a guy, especially in North America, he's been in a lot of professional scenes, he's been in a lot of the great teams in North America, played well. And, um, you know, during his times that he was playing, he had one of the most, like, like highest numbers of supreme titles in North America, multi-role player, roam, XP, anything you could give it to him, he has it in his arsenal. And, you know, now that he is on the coaching position for A77, paired up with Smiling, right? Like, this is like a very good one-two punch for the side of A77 to have, like, this backbone that they could rely on, uh, this, this you know, six-man that they could find out a, a sense of direction. So, you know, a, a lot of, like, the mediators, like, a lot of the uh, scuffles that they have gets resolved quite quickly. But on the other hand, GG... Uh, you know, an all-star lineup. You say he doesn't, they, they don't have a coach, but they definitely have people outside helping them out. It may not be on the official roster, but just from their performance, how they do their homework, they are still like relatively on track in terms of just progressing forward, dominating the whole tournament. And I don't think they're going to let go any little bit of steam, even without a manager or a coach there. Well, you will always bring in some outsider or insider information that we don't know about. That's the value that you bring to the table. Ex-pro player, you weigh the man who's always, you know, and everywhere. And the man whose predictions have actually been on top of his game this season. So let's take a look at the predictions coming in for this match. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, it's going to be it's spicy. spicy. <laughs> Ooh, it's spicy. Okay, so I actually have the odd ones out here. So let me do an interview. Let's start with Yue because this season I saw so many comments saying how Yue is voting for the underdogs. I'm like, no, he's not. He's not voting for any <laughs> underdog except for Fiends. This man is here to win. So Yue, tell us why you voting for Area 77 versus GG. Do you actually believe this is, you know, it could go to your way? I, I think GG is a, a, a better team in terms of the experience and in terms of the standings, they definitely are. But A77 with the momentum coming in and especially how close they had, I was casting the match between these two teams. A77 literally had it. They were standing on top of their base. And I do think this time around with a little bit more homework and a little bit more, you know, things on the line, I do think they can prevail, get this upset and get the win in the upper brackets this time around. Private? <laughs> But the way I'm looking at it, I'm like, sure, if you want to if you want to compare things like stats, experience, or uh, mm -hmm. overall uh, <laughs> live stage uh, talent, yeah, you can give it to Gaming Gladiators. But I'm voting with my heart this time because yep. way back in the first NACT, it was Area 77 that came away with the victory. And Area 77 that was looked at to be the team that would ultimately uh, dethrone BTK. That seems so long ago, but it's been since then I have not seen a team, an Area 77 as strong as I've seen this season. And I feel like this match could go one of two ways. And uh, I'm gonna do something crazy here. I'm gonna quote Chicken, but Chicken has been talking about how Area 77 has been the team that has given them the most problems in scrims. It's just that sometimes they falter a little bit when it comes here to the playoffs. I feel like if we can get that team that Chicken has seen in the scrims, that top tier with the top tier um, banning, the top tier playing and rotations, we could have ourselves a five game or yeah, a five game match here uh, that goes all the way. I mean, I, I agree with you guys. I mean, looking at the prediction score right now, I don't know why they showed this, but um, <laughs> it seems like I'm not on top of my game this season. So I guess <laughs> if you are GG, you probably wish I was not voting for you because it seems like I am the caster's curse this season. But yeah, I think voting for GG is voting for the 
the strongest team who's dominated recently. But Area 77, the ages where they shine, where they took the throne, I was there. I was playing um, rank a lot. And then I always see them as a top, top five man. It's the undefeated champs. So definitely this season, we're seeing that coming back. And also, I want to point out how there are two imports coming in from Area 77. And we know how strong teams are with the Filipino imports. That's just how Mobile Legends... Um, tournaments have been so not only do they have the imports they have a full filipino lineup and we we'll, we'll speak the same language they also have people who are drafting for them so that's something we have to consider with how strong a77 is as long as you, they put in the practice they put in the hours i think so much to expect from them right there's there's a lot more to it than you know just the stats right it's it's, it's there's the heart <laughs> yeah. there's the friendships there's the, you know, the whole like organization culture from A77. I, I've had a good conversation with smiling with some of the managers. Like everyone over there is so friendly. They, you know, it is a real family. Now A77's A77 family, right? And they and they have a good group of roster, good group of players that they can pull from. That's why we have people like, you know, Jules QT coming in from Mar. We have plenty of new rosters coming in. Like A77 has such a wide, you know, variety of things that they can, you know, push up and get the best of the best value for everything you know it's it's a very very strong and convincing team like i'm a definitely a fan here yeah we'll see how, yes, how it stacks up yeah. here uh, especially uh, area seven, like you said uh even meeting them in las vegas meeting them in uh or not meeting them in las uh, vegas meeting them in uh la or in uh was it uh, uh, down in California? They, they, it yeah. was. They were just a friendly group of guys, just happy to be there, doing something that they love and playing with uh, playing Mobile Legends. And it has just shown, especially because they they usually keep the same roster, they're having fun with it, and they're being they've been very competitive with it. Not more so than they've been this season. And I just really feel like. Uh, uh, the growth that I've seen from them has just been immense, especially because uh, there was just so long that we had, uh, I want to say, almost forgotten about them because they had just kind of fallen to the wayside and it took them time mm -hmm. to kind of regroup and, and find that momentum again. But here we are, the top four in North America, ready to go off in the, uh, the playoffs right now. Yes, ready to, ready to go off. And I was there the, the moment that they formed the team, actually. Like, I was playing the five minutes during the time where oh. Area 77 was formed. And I think starting from two, three months after, or just when, when that happened, they were very, very strong in NA. So um, I'm glad to see it come back. And for all the fans who are watching who stuck with us for this long, we actually have an early giveaway this time. We have a giveaway coming to you right now. So if you're the early birds coming in today, you are mm. lucky. We have giveaway codes on the screen for one of these skins. So there's 40 this time. Oh, I'm glad that they're up in the game with 40. So make sure you redeem the code for a chance to want to win one of these permanent skins. Dude, someone got to hold Wheezy and Trex back because we both know like <laughs> they're out here with multiple devices once again, trying to cop one of these permanent skins, right? These the, the, these tournament chests. If you guys are out there, make sure to go, uh, you know, bring up your phones, get the codes in, get the QR code in, and uh, make sure to uh, steal this a uh, limited quantity because it is going to be first time for serve here. Yeah, uh, it, we've talked about it before. The the best skins are free skins, and uh, Mobile Legends actually been pushing the envelope when it comes to the skins. I think we were just talking about, as you saw it in some of those ads there, uh, a lot of skins on the way, especially those uh, King of Fighters skins coming out soon uh, that uh, a lot of us are excited about as well. Super excited. <laughs> Used to buy so many skins, you know, so many diamonds spent for Moonton. So, um, well, first match of the day is starting. So. Uh, see which champ will take it home today. Bye, Liz. Oh, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. We've been talking about it, especially right now. It's two very strong teams, two teams that understand the meta, understand drafting, and in a point right now in the meta where there are just so many dangers. I talked with you about it before. No matter who you ban here, there are still going to be some super strong and game-changing picks out there. Yeah, I mean, 
you know there's there's a lot of new things that are coming into the meta that's like almost game breaking if played correctly i'm sure a lot of people have seen kind of the chip in action once in a while um hopefully we get to see some of that today but chip hasn't been as consistent and as abusive as this new combination this lu yi and arlot and uh the bands are on the table here the valentina has been taking out so has the cc and the joy so a lot of the utility are still available a lot of the bully uh like uh laners especially like the roger the ruby the arlots the flex are all available for both of these teams like i mean the drop is really really open these days and even with some of the bands are on the table the fairness gets taken out here there's still so many picks available for both teams to uh you know pick for and to find a strategy that works for them to be able to get these games and these are tight close series and these are really really close teams here private yeah, for me, it's a game of pick your poison. There's, especially against a team like Gaming Gladiators, where just people are just so lethal. We see that in the right now, best player. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, like hone in on him. We're going to take off the joy from him because he's just so mechanical with a lot of his picks. You were talking already. There's a lot of the utility still out, uh, left out there. Minotaur, Tigreal, who have been such game-changing uh, play or characters for a lot of these teams. And then there's some of these ones that just recently have come into play. The Rock. Roger, you were talking about Natan off screen. And then uh, my my favorite right now has been the Masha, which has had a huge Ooh. role, especially when it comes to that late game, being able to close the distance on a lot of those squishier heroes for those fights. So this could be going anywhere. Still up on the board, I want to say probably the most dangerous when it comes to like the supports. Matilda's still out there. Masha's oh. still out there. Oh man, there's so much. Roger's still good. I, uh. I, it just really is uh, exciting for me, not just because of the teams playing each other, but because of the mixing and matching that can be done with a lot of these compositions with what's left out on the board. You know, now with the bands are all on the table, Nolan gets taken out by the side of Ace Sunny, some to secure the last ban here. You know, I think Masha first pick could be a potential if Shark wants to go for that. Um, things like the Fredrin or the Boxy or the Barats that, you know, are available. Those are great first picks that, you know, don't take away from anything too much. They could honestly opt for a Flex Roger that could be potential or you know even the gg strat that they like to go that ruby quite early chicken and both shark are great uh especially with the i'm offended um but they do opt to go for the fredrin fredrin especially compared to let's say the boxia and the barats very very good retro right especially with the first skill cast with the retro i believe it is going to be the highest damage out of those three so in terms of securing for the objective he's going to be completely great and that's not even including the cc kit the dashes that he has and even with the explosive uh, damage with his bonk that he can come through now a77 with two picks i do think lu yi could be a good potential matilda is also available does get picked up here Ooh. they could opt to go for you know even a roger or a natan early on or pick up the first mage and you know try to see how gg dances against the comp that they have here uh, right now, those uh, tanky junglers reign supreme in the meta. There's been some videos out on YouTube about mm. people trying to see that. Even Filipinos, uh, the Philippine uh, MPL, they've tried their best to try to like flex in other junglers. But right now, tanking mm -hmm. the ability to stand on those objectives, to just go into the fight and uh, and and to try to wait for that great opportunity for the retribution, it reigns supreme right now. So now you're going to have a Barats, especially on the side for Area 77. They're able to counter in with the Barats and the Matilda and we talked about it before Flask of the Oasis now has made some game changers for a lot of these supports especially for Matilda who's gonna be able to use uh, that guiding cool. wind to add uh, the shield and then with the Flask of Oasis you're gonna have even more shield for your entire team not to mention the the mobility that she provides to your team so both teams opting to go for the photo, the Flask of Oasis uh, type of roamers, the Minotaur and the Matilda here. The Vexana gets picked up, a great hero. Uh, very, very strong first pick, especially after the Fair Mist being out. Novaria is still available. That is the potential, but Mark QT with Louis. Now, Mark QT has been one of those mage players down mint that has taken this Louis early on in the season, right? You know, there wasn't much talk about uh, using the Divergence, but Mark UT definitely has been handling this. Another mage that comes into mind is going to be Nicolette. 
right? So, you know, Mark UT on this Louis, very, very hard to deal with. Second phase bans on the table soon. XPs are needed for both teams and also the marksmen. So things like the Roger, the Natan, uh, Carrie, Claude, those are strong picks. And there's only four bands on the table. It's very, very hard to go against that. You also got something like the x uh to deal with the, the, the tanky lineup that both GG and A77 are looking to set up. And there's also like that new element of like maybe a, a Paquito, a Yuzong, a Terizla, you know, lots of things are available, but no, Brody and Harit gets taken out. That's two early game marksmen off the table already. Yeah, I, I think trying to set up that Roger pickup, I'm, I'm wondering if, if that's what Gaming Gladius is looking for, like a next ban here. You've taken off, I want to mm. say, one of the strongest counters he has on the board, which is that Harith. And uh, to go back to this last pick for Area 77, the Lu Yi, uh, especially with how strong, I want to say I haven't seen much of Mark Cuti lately, uh, especially uh, on the Lu Yi, but if it's anything like what we've been seeing lately from Hoon uh, or on the World's K, Lu Yi has just been become so, Crazy. such this huge utility for teams and especially her biggest weakness right now is her mobility you pair that up with a matilda you have a lu yi that can still output that huge amount of early game damage get you around the map and then the mobility not only that she provides with the diversion but the mobility that she's going to have with a matilda that's going to be able to get her out of uh out of harm's way or even help with a lot of the repositioning during a lot of these fights we're moving into the last bands it looks like benedetta and ixia taking off the board so this Benedetta pick from Yurishi is actually quite interesting. I know Fry definitely has it uh, in his picks also, but Yurishi has been such a strong split pusher that taking out the Benedetta uh, could kind of just like kind of hold him, you know, together a little bit more. Now, Masha is still available if they do want to go for that on the side of A77. Um, but, you know, you talked about the Lu Yi pick and it's very interesting that you know, with the Divergent Ultimate, there's no damage on that ultimate. That's why, especially early on, like, you know, you have heroes like Vexana, like Eve, Farsa, big, big ultimates, big range. But then you got a hero like Louis coming in and it's, it's just a little bit different. But, you know, now with the Divergent kind of being a very meta shifting, you know, abusing the power of the rotation, it definitely works really well, especially, uh, you know, it, it, it opens up the skill ceiling of the hero it's, it's almost unlimited at this point on how creative you can use with the divergent but now 877 do lock in this roger with the harith and the brody off on the board it is a very very strong uh gold lane pick very interesting picks here. Uh, the, the Roger's going to blend well, especially he has the Lycan Pounce, which he can basically dive underneath a lot of abilities and CC to close the distance on uh, an Irithel, close the distance on a, a Vaxana there. Uh, but, I mean, on, in answer to that, Fly Chicken picking up the Paquito, that's an immense amount of damage at level mm. 4. So you're going to really have to be careful about your placement, especially Mark Cutie on this Lu Yi. She's very susceptible to a lot of that damage. If he can close the distance if maybe they miss time that guiding wind from the matilda i mean he's going to be able to eat them up here and then of course mm -hmm. iridel a great kiting ability and then a lot of a burst down it's i want to say i, I want to say a, a more squared away draft from gg and versing a lot of mobility oh. coming in from area 77 i saw you shake your head there for that last pick there Yui. i i I honestly thought A77 would opt to set up for a little bit more of a frontline CC, some, some, something like a Terizla, right? Paired up with the Matilda and the Louis, those are some front lines that are a little bit hard to kind of go into, but no, they do decide to go for this Flex Barat and the XP. It's been quite popularized, especially in Asia. We've seen moments of greatness with the Flicker plays, especially in North America. So this time around, it's definitely going to be a pretty good matchup. And especially since he did see the Paquito being picked up, he's like, yeah, I think I could take this, right? Give Tarzan <laughs> a, a faster jungler. They have two great front lines coming in. And, you know, the Boxia, it, it's been kind of a rare pick in North America. Not so much these days, but definitely very, very strong overseas. Even like first pickable. So it is a great hero on Tarzan. Definitely going to be very utility focused for both of these teams. And, you know, both of the drafts have been looking very, very sharp. It, it, it's it's going to be very hard to decide who 
actually has that advantage, uh, especially early on here at private. Yeah, you 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 kind of lack the setting potential from a boxia, but you make up for it with a lot of the stock anti heal that he comes in with that can kind of maybe head off a lot of the healing that Minotaur is going to be able to do, especially with that flask of the Oasis. But ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be Game and Gladiators taking on Area 77, Game Ones of our top bracket of the playoffs. Yeah, so you know, just take a look at some of the emblems. Best player already has this impure rage. Um, so he's not going to be able to have kind of uh, that uh, great of a clear, especially compared to, let's say, Concussive Blast, which does a little bit more AoE damage, but definitely a little bit more higher burst in terms of that first skill. Definitely going to help in terms of uh, getting the objective, which Fredrin does so, like, so well. Right, and uh, you, we, we do have a few quantum charges on the side of A77 Matilda with that very, very fast mobility. Emblems look relatively, you know, standard across the board. The Wilderness Blessing on both the Romes and even uh, the Mages. And of course, you know, a lot of the tanky, but you know, this Fredrin supports Emblem. We've seen this actually from A77 last week, this time around. Uh, best player is going to be taking this uh, support emblem, Fredrin. It, it, it's kind of this like assassin focus where he's fast on the cooldowns, has the high burst from the Impure Rage, but you know, he's probably going to uh, lead up to something like a brute force for some more mobility, more damage, and just, just a little bit more kind of like brawl momentum early on. Ooh, I was about to say a, a little a Tarzan saw the, the trio of gaming gladiators that's been so lethal for a lot of teams. The rotations by them have been instrumental in a lot of the success of gaming gladiators. Saw that very early, got the heck out of Dodge. Mm. Uh, I thought about that minion, but already Area 77 pressing their, their advantage into gaming gladiators jungle a little bit to try to refuse a little bit of that jungle, but coming up on the game's first turtle. Yeah, and you know, honestly, with the Boxia pick at the very end, Boxia typically likes to, you know, deny at least one or two minions from the side of GG. But before that, though, some engagements. Yeah, Jake Cutie took a heck of a lot of damage from Fly Chicken here. Ooh, Shark and flickers, but it's not going to be getting away from Tarzan. Is that going to go ahead and uh, flex out this fight, though, for the turtle? Jake Cutie, very low. Best player tried to chase, but not able to get the handle on it. And we're still fighting at the turtle. Best player, 1v2 right now, does succeed in resetting this turtle right now yeah great skirm skirmish coming out from the side of ace 77 they are still down in terms of the overall goal but they're able to pick up a kill there shark does not have flicker but is level four ready Ooh, and a flicker comes out best player able to secure the game's first turtle jqd does decide not to complete that circling eagle goes ahead creates a little bit of distance but still trying to get a little bit of a uh, vision gets caught by hoon with some cc takes about uh 50 of his damage there and does get out i want to say uh right now a kill for area 77 but uh objective going over to gaming gladiators yeah and it and it does seem like, you know, the Minotaur and the Vexana paired with together at level four, it's a little bit uh, too much for the Lu Yi and the Matilda, right? These two picks are very, very mobility focused, divergent, second skill on Matilda, very, very fast heroes. Um, so, you know, the, the, the side of A77, they may opt to kind of just give away the first two turtles, get the farms going. Uh, you know, Roger has a great mid game, especially when he gets kind of like that eight minute power spike when you have two items, they're gonna be dealing a lot of damage. So maybe just waiting until the second or even the third turtle to look for an engagement might uh, be the strategy that A77 has. On the other hand, Gaming Guy, Gladiators definitely looking for that bully ball shark early on already. <laughs> you know, even though dying early on and trading that flicker early, they were still able to secure that objective with pretty much no problem at all. Yeah, it, it felt like the reset. Oh, actually, here, JQ in a little bit of trouble. Circling Eagle around, gets himself to safety. Best player not going to be able to complete that as it does look like. I mean, right now, a, a, a lot of, uh, a, I want to say, safe plays right now. Arius, oh my god, Mark Cutie, as I say that, underneath the tower gaming, Gladiators ever able to find a kill onto Mark Cutie. I, I do want to point out that I'm a little bit worried about the side of A77's draft. Just, just, just because the fact that one, they didn't get the aggressive turtle early on and with picks like roger especially in the gold lane he's able to kind of just bully look at this like he's able to take this lane out by himself his power spike is early on on the other hand a77 kind of their other four people but before that 
Minoan Fury comes out, does catch two members. You can see Tarzan getting a good distance. JQD with a circling eagle. 10% left onto this turtle. Shark a little bit low. Fly Chicken in the midst and fray of Area 77 is able. Best player gets a kill onto JQD. You do see the appraiser's wrath come down. Yureshi is low. Tarzan trying to create some distance. Get to the safety of his tower. They only take one death there. And uh, Gaming Gladiators, another. Oh, actually, no. That turtle went to Area 77 and gaming yeah. gladiators this time taking the kills yeah i mean no it was a one for one trade for both teams both supports uh left the map um but the side of a77 were able to get the objective this time around but going back to kind of what i'm worried about is that they don't really have the cc late game to be able to you know kind of set up for great fights you know compared to you know the double knock up coming out from the minotaur from the fredrin it's a little bit hard uh for the side of a77 to set up but i do think they have a few things that are quite uh, in favor of them, right? The Divergent, uh, the Matilda, which is so fast. Uh, the Matilda drink water. That's e e even a different element Ooh. before that. But Tarzan here. Yeah, Tarzan came in there. It was followed by the yin yang uh, and passive damage that comes from uh, Mark Cutie there with that low Yi, putting a heap of damage on the Gaming Gladiators mid laner there to provide them now rotating up to the top into the purple jungle of a Tarzan here. Best player comes in there, is not able to get the retreat onto the purple buff. Tarzan still able to secure it, but already you're seeing those little signs of life. His best player getting very confident yeah and you know the side of a77 what i'm worried about is this is rithal not significantly strong early on but the later the game goes especially with the mobility that she has it's gonna be quite hard for things for like short range mages like the louis or boxy where he has to get up and personal even the barats like it's gonna be hard to be able to kind of pin him down and lock him in a position but jqt getting pinned by himself pops the purify so no purify available for the next objective for jqt and before the turtle fight starts i just want to say like one thing that i've noticed mark cutie really hasn't been able to utilize that diversion you can see Ooh. jqt in a little bit of trouble here tarzan coming into the back for the rescue here damage being laid on by mark cutie with that passive best player very low is going to go ahead and dash himself to safety but fly chicken into the back lines finds himself a kill on to jqt yeah, I mean, fried chicken coming out from the backside, able to, you know, zero out JQT in that team fight. There was like, you know, a front fight happening, a back fight happening, and you can see, you know, fried chicken sneaking on to the backside. But ISO able to pick up the top tower against Zia. This is something that we've kind of seen it coming, right? Uh, you know, the 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 Roger going up against the Rithal, just the significant early game that he has is just a little bit too much uh, to handle. So definitely getting the top tower is great for A77. They have the tower's advantage, seeing if they could get uh, the control over the jungle when it's leading up to the very first Lord now. Yeah, and I mean, uh, it's 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 right now. It's it's about Area Seventy Seven kind of needing to press their advantage. Your shark in a little bit of trouble, fifty percent down. You can see JQD well in the back lines. They hone in on him. They sense blood in the water. Tarzan coming in for the save onto the back part of best player. Five chicken gonna find and secure the kill onto JQD. Lord is up, and this actually might set Area Seventy Seven back a bit. You see a lot of CC coming onto Tarzan. Five chicken coming onto the backside, looking to help out things there appraiser's wrath is down 10 percent on tarzan with a pop-up with the minoan fury and fly chicken finds another kill as they are chasing down your reshi yeah a great use of skills from the side of gaming gladiators just stacking it right on top of tarzan and tarzan and Yurishi, those are two big wonky tough targets lots of defense lots of health and the side of gg able to kind of just rotate with their spells and able to get both of those kills but before shark yeah, you see the Lycan Pounce does go on there now, setting his sights onto Zia, slapping on with that damage. Best player is alone. I believe he was able to secure that Lord, now trying to get away. Iso on the hunt finds himself another kill. So two kills for one Lord. Uh, and they're going to press some, they're gonna pressure onto it. this mid tower. So I want to say this is an up for Area 77 right now. That's a most definite up for the side of A77. Although GG was able to get the Lord, they did drop uh, two players down. Even best player was taken out there. Now, 
The Lord is marching down on the top side. They should be able to get like a small five man siege going on. It is the first objective here, but 877 already with two towers in the game. Now it's, you know, it's deciding fact to see if A77, if they're able to defend this Lord, if they can just, you know, drop one tower, defend the rest. That might be a pretty good up for the side of them, but a Rithal scales so well into the late game and roger is just gonna get weaker and weaker as items are being stacked up by both teams i feel like a77 now is the time if they really want to shine to be able to get a good convincing team fight get the deny coming in because i feel like gg they're just going to be able to scale especially with that frontline defense that lockdown cc coming out from the minnow from the frederick it's going to be quite tough for the side of a77 to be able to handle yeah, and, and I'm kind of noticing a lack of utilization of this diversion. We're really not using Lu Yi to like her maximum potential here. And that's two towers down for Area 77. They were able to get one at the bottom lane there. ISO able to secure that. So I, I still want to say just narrowly kind of edging in favor of Area 77. But you're right. As this goes later and later, Area 77 is going to have just a tougher time with these engagements. And I talk about that. Tarzan gets caught. A lot of pop-ups there. 50%. And the guiding win able to get him to Lu safety. Lu Yi put on the damage with a lot of that passive damage. Zia being chased down. Are they going to be able to find him? No. Zia kicks in the Nas and is able to get himself to safety. Yeah, I mean, the side of A77, they do have the raw element of the Divergent, right? The ability to kind of go across maps, defend the side lanes, get those one versus one situations into like a one versus three. Take a look at some of the in-game equipments. Raj already up about 1k gold, has the BOD endless battle. So very, very high burst. Not very traditional in terms of the build. A lot of the people, they like to go for something like a DHS golden staff corrosion. This time around, opting for a little bit more in terms of that burst damage. I think it's quite good. It adds uh, a lot of physical damage that the side of A77 is, you know, quite lacking here. Uh, but the gold lead is still very, very close onto both sides. This is something we really like to see in NACT Private, right? Like long drawn out games, 33k, 233k's, low kill score, right? It's very macro heavy. And, you know, these two teams are definitely very strong in terms of the macro sense, the strategies, getting those banana split push getting those, you know, numbers in advantage. It's just it's just going to be a great game to watch here. One thing I noticed when I saw those items up there is that uh, on the side, a shark does not have the mm. flask yet. And, and they're Ooh. already able to kind of really hold their own uh, right now it's with coming. a lot of these fights. Once he gets that flask, you're going to, I want to mm. say you're going to start seeing a little bit of a tip in the, in the how these team fights are going to start being uh, happening here for Area 77 because you're going to have a Whoa. lot of shielding coming there. You're she just misses that Denton is welcome there on to best player. Circling Eagle on to best player. Is he going to continue it? He does not. Shark looking for an opportunity. Minoan and Fury catches two members. Another pop up by Hoon on the side. Tarzan goes in, takes a heap of damage, is able to get himself to safety. The rest, you can see Mark Cutie does not get away. And best player scoops up his uh, saving grace there. The Lord for the side of Gaming Gladiators the the way that ace uh, the way that gg has set up that team fight is is so beautiful they had shark kind of in the front side zoning three to four members and you had tarzan you know deep into gg's lineup but un unable to get the peel that he was looking for completely just bursted out in that whole entire team fight now gg looking for a five man siege yeah, big pop-ups coming, circling Eagle. Zia able to find a kill on to you, Reshi. They are enforcing their will. Only oh, three man. members left. Mark Cutie back up now, looking to put on to the damage. Maybe be able to punish some of the gaming gladiators. Looking for a defense here. Best, Best player looking for the taunt right now. Lord is Ooh. at the enemy gates. Down comes the appraiser's wrath. Does not find a kill there, but Mark Cutie gets killed by Hoon there. Half health onto this base. First game gonna go to gaming gladiators. Wow, what a what a what a close coming out from Gaming Gladiators. 13 minutes, right? This is the second Lord that marched down onto the top side, and they were able to kind of just group up, get like one or two pickoffs here and there, and able to kind of push 
the victory here. Now, it's at a low kill scoring game, but, you know, very, very high in terms of kind of the GPM. The damage is quite high coming out from gaming gladiators. I think, you know, their comp, it definitely worked well, especially with the amount of CC that they had with the Minnow, with the with the Fred, when they're able to get the setups going and just kind of withstanding the early game presence of a Roger and not letting this game scale into the late game where, you know, the Divergent, the teleport plays are, you know, so prone for abuse and so prone for, you know, just tipping the scale of the game. They were able to close this game out very cleanly, 13 minutes, very standard. No one dies in the Lord. They had the siege, the death wall going, and they were able to prevail and push for victory in such a short amount of time here, Private. Yeah, you can see here, uh, Azia there, 3 0 and 1. Uh, despite, I want to say, being uh, forced uh, uh, very hard onto the lane, you can see there mm -hmm. even uh, his matchup against ISO. ISO dominated that lane, but Zia still able to kind of keep his cool, maintain his composure uh, until it got to the point where he was going to be relevant. And that was with these team fights and the setups by Shark uh, with that Minoan Fury allowed Zia to kind of come in, get a lot of those kills. Hoon as well with the Minoan Fury. Uh, providing that eternal guardian and then that the, the huge amount of damage that you get from a Vaxana. As we take a look here at some of the other stats here, Rich Guy, this is uh, all except for the sandbag going over to Gaiman Gladiators. Uh, of course, Hoon with uh, uh, the the exorbitant amount of damage from Gaiman Gladiators. Zia, of course, uh, in the gold lane with the uh, the high amount of gold. And then, uh, of course, the, the assist coming from Shark. The, and this is, uh, oh, the, the XP lane, which was, uh, I want to say a, a not as favorable for Yureshi. That Paquito pick, uh, Fly Chicken, just uh, uh, an absolute uh, did a great job with him. And this is one of the things about picking, like, let's say a Bratz early. Like, if we kind of think back into the draft, we had Gaming Gladiators open with a Fredrin. And, you know, to pick up Bratz right after that, especially with Boxia being available, I think it's a little bit too much um for uh the side of a77 right and they were lacking in terms of the cc in terms of the front lines to be able to stop zia uh in his uh tracks and with something like a barats where you saw him using daytona's welcoming kind of like an opening move and when it's unable to hit like majority of the times i don't think the barats and the boxia worked well um together especially in this one but if you take a look at the damage i thought mark qt was gonna be showing up in terms of the highest damage dealt i also new uh like things like the poquito could possibly be up there but hoon coming out on top just a little bit barely on uh the vexana just shows how good of a hero that pick is right the early pick uh with uh the vexana and not really too much damage taken right the side of gg played so well here high kill participations across the board you were able to get chicken into the fights relatively early on and zia just played you know a, a very nice game didn't really lose any deaths even though he got his towers down he was still able to you know create the impact get the farms going and mid to late game he was still dealing tons of damage on the rotations yeah, and it's unfortunate. Uh, you called it right from the draft. Uh, I felt like uh, maybe we kind of had forced the flexibility of the Barats mm. there. Uh, you pick up the Boxy, and now the Barats is in the XP lane, a lane that he doesn't really shine in. I mean, sure, he's viable. He can be. But I think you are you're, you need to check a lot of boxes, The and uh, especially against uh, somebody like Chicken, who's, uh, who's I want to say, one of the, the best in the XP lane right now. And I'm told that we have uh, some clips of, of that match up there especially in some of those last fight ups that really kind of changed the pace here you saw shark getting in there you talked about it right in the midst there in front forcing uh game or not forcing area 77 back they weren't able to come in and protect tarzan as he went deep into the lines as soon as they were able to push it in they do get the lord and then it's pretty much game over from there they're able to to push in here they're a man down now two men down lord up at top it, it, it seemed like it was going to be a little bit more of an even game but the moment that gaming gladiators got the advantage they kept it they held on to it and they were able to close this one at 13 minutes i i feel like a big thing for me is uh as you discussed that boxy a pickup and i feel like an underutilization of the lu yi you don't really have to be late game to be successful with her diversion uh and i feel like we kind of picked lu yi because we know she's strong 
but we didn't really excel with her. Uh, and because there's still things you can do in the early game. I, I mean, I, I dare talk about the uh, Hoon uh, when he plays it on gaming gladiators. It, whether it's it's as soon as he gets that ultimate, he's he's making sure that XP can get back to their lane quicker. He's getting uh, he's setting up for ganks onto the side lanes. There, it's not just waiting for those team fights to find out if maybe you can find a, a little bit of a position uh, in there. So I, I feel like uh, that was another I want to say hurdle for Area 77 in that match, and uh, we're gonna see if they can kind of come back from that. Uh, uh, come back with something a little bit stronger, a little bit more precise uh, against Game and Gladiators. We're moving into game two. Yeah, and you know, just the last point on the last one, it almost felt like the side of A77 lacked a little bit in two departments from where I see it. One is going to be the frontline CC to be able to hold it down, especially going up against the Rithal. The side of A77 had that last pick to be able to kind of lock down uh, the very last you know the rithal and they were just kind of unable to do so they opted go for a flex pick and with the boxia pick they didn't really get that early invade happening right you could see uh you know tarzan trying to go all over the place trying to get that last minion but it ended up just being kind of 50 50 uh around the turtle that's number one and number two i felt like they kind of lacked in terms of the clear departments they didn't have that late game minion managing to be able to kind of shove the waves because you know quite honestly the side of gg they walked down mid they put all their members underneath the mid tower, was able to get a team fight started, was able to push that tower, go onto the top side, rinse and repeat, and have enough utility to be able to sustain and push through all the way to the base. And A77, they almost stood no chance in terms of just clearing those small minions, right? Things like Novaria, Claude, Carry definitely can bring in a little bit more in terms of that clear that's kind of the things that i want to see a77 be able to do in this draft bring in a little bit more cc maybe question some of the flex picks that are maybe unnecessary right open with the fredrin no need to take the barats or uh the akai early on or the box here early uh maybe go for something like the natan which brings in a little bit more late game it seems like a7 will have a good early game strategy where they can use something that's a little bit more weaker a little bit more glass cannon that has so much aoe damage and especially at the 10k gold a 10k Natan versus 10k Roger. Huge difference. Single target versus <laughs> shredder backside, front side with the entropy teleport. That's huge, right? So A77 this time around, opening with the Fredrin. I love this. This is pretty much the same exact thing that GG does. And hey, man, this is a great pick. The response coming through uh, something. I think a Natan early pickup could be potential. Shark goes for the Matilda this time around. Ooh. Oh. Uh... Here, here's games. the scary thing is, uh, and I've, I was talking about this before, is that you, there's so many strong picks out there that you're going to leave something open with it. Shark, even all the way back in M3, has had just one of the most disgusting and vulgar Matildas I've <laughs> ever seen in games. And this is exactly, uh, it, it looks, it's almost akin to what you were talking about before with a lot of that mobility that you get. You wanted to see the Lu Yi and the R lot but uh, we're gonna get a mix of the matilda and the r lot you're gonna be able to reposition him around there he's very strong a lot of tools in him to get that setting potential uh and then on the side of area 77 looks like we're gonna pick up the hair off kind of wanting to proceed that uh, potential roger pick from gaming gladiators and the valentina to i mean i i want to say like uh, you got a, a list of ultimates right now on the side of gaming gladiators that you can pick from you got the final slash potentially the circling eagle uh, I want to say mostly the, the final slash, though, because I feel like the circling eagle mm. could potentially put Mark Udy in harm's way more than it would uh, actually benefit the team. Yeah, so I saw in this Harith, it's almost like it's kind of like a a personality pick for the side of iso like he has been doing really well with the harith pick i know there, there's plenty of opportunities like especially back then on btk harith and one one those are the two picks that iso loves to go for my qt on this valentina a little bit early 
uh, for me, I think there is still a lot of solid options available, especially things like the Navaria with the fast, clear speed. But there's only a handful of players that like to prioritize the Valentina, and if, especially if they're proficient on it and have make the impact, they see the final slash. They're like, "Hey, flicker final slash, something I've done countless of times. I, you know, I would love that pick, right?" And Mark QT is definitely one of them. But a pick that we have not seen quite a bit private is gonna be this Guinevere that gets locked in for best player and with the Matilda available this pretty much is set in stone uh for the jungle pick I'm assuming right Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, especially uh, our lot Matilda out there. I mean, this is going to be a jungle one. And uh, I'm just actually, I don't know what you go here. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to go with a tankier Gwen pick there. So he's going to have the CC of mm. that uh, Violet Requiem more so than you're going to be looking at the damage uh, that you get when you go with a full damage Gwen build out there. Uh, it's going to have the same effect. You're going to be tanky. You're going to be able to hang out at that Lord and uh, Turtle Pit to kind of contest a lot of those objectives here. Uh, and then, yeah, just, uh, just CC. It's raw CC coming from them uh, right now with a lot of their picks. The mm. same thing with Area 77, Sans the Harith pickup. Uh, Valentina's got a little bit of CC. Fredrin's just a walking um, a walking taunt uh, for the enemy, but uh, it's it's definitely going to be something I, I definitely want to see if we're going to prioritize maybe a frontliner for the side of Area 77. It's something that they lacked mm. out in the, the last game, which gaming gladiators were absolutely able to take advantage of. So here's the thing that side of A77 is lacking though, is a lot of physical damage. A lot of the times, Harith loves to be paired up with something like a Natan, very physical heavy. Now, the Natan has been banned out in the first phase. Things like Paquito, uh, uh, Lapu Lapu full damage, or even a Benedetta. Uh, that is that was banned on the first game that was available this time around brings in a lot of physical damage that a77 is lacking now the side of gg yes they are kind of on a similar spot here they pick up the navaria brings in a little bit of extra magic damage and a lot of lane clearing and on a person like hoon it's very very hard but I am so excited for this, Raphael. I've been waiting for this matchup pretty much this whole entire time. Traditionally, Matilda is not a, major, not a support that's uncounterable. Things like Lolita, Matilda, even things like Estes and Florin work really well against the sustain, the reap, the, the reactive play that Matilda kind of needs. And now with the Raphael, you're going to be able to see kind of this mid lane strategy where Matilda uses first skill. Raphael slows him down, gets out of the range, gets a few auto attacks in. The trade is so good, so in favor of the hands of Raphael. I love A77's draft here, especially paired up with a nice Benedetta for that split push. And GG here finalized their draft from the Exia pick. Yeah, it, it, very interesting here, especially with the lineup, uh, the the competition that you're going to have here in the XP lane uh, with the uh, the Benedetta taking on an Arlot. Uh, I, th I feel like uh, Benedetta is pretty much uncounterable in the lane. You just basically mm. got to let them do their thing, clear the lane, then you clear your lane after. The Matilda's going to be, or the Benedetta's going to be able to out-rotate you there. If you have JQD kind of setting up a lot of that and uh, helping them move to, to, to rotate faster. Uh, but on the side, the synergy that we have for gaming gladiators here especially the ixia who traditionally is very immobile especially when you launch out that full barrage there's nowhere for you to go you might have a flicker on you but also now you're going to have that guiding wind from shark on this matilda that's going to be able to get you out of harm's way going to be able to pull you back or even reposition you to a point to maybe cut off area 77's escape but we've been talking about it can area 77 bounce back from uh i want to say last seasons where they've kind of shrugged off they've gotten beat in the early games and kind of fallen off in the later can we see them bounce back here in game two against gaming gladiators we're about to find out hmm and pure rage on tarzan qt we should see a support emblem kind of going for that brute force route um that tarzan kind of likes to go for um but a question here for you private have you ever seen a moving missile barrage uh, I, I have when when it was when we first started seeing the Ixia and the Matilda, Matilda. used in together. Oh, JQ, he's gonna get caught. They able uh, Gaming Gladiator is able to finish off where Area 77 was not on the Hoon and claim the first blood already. Yeah, very early aggressive rotation for the side of Gaming Gladiators. Even with the like Guinevere in the jungle, they're able to kind of go across the map and get that green camp really early on. That's going to put them uh, quite ahead, especially if Tarzan is unable to get there. But 
Best play already. Impact two places. Picks up two kills within one minute. That's huge for this side of gaming gladiators. Yeah, and especially under tower. Fry taking a little bit of trouble here. Tarzan with the uh, energy blast there. Down comes the appraiser's rat. Fried a chicken very smoothly, able to uh, mm. find himself a dash to get out of harm's away. And uh, unfortunately, Area 77 come out empty handed. Yeah, and now they're coming out with even more uh, XP difference uh, between them. Uh, you know, best player able to get two kills already near the top side of the map, farms up both the green camps, and Tarzan unable to get the green camp that is next to the XP. That's going to be a pretty big loss in terms of that XP. You're going to see level five versus level four. Best player, best player already on a better rotation, even just early on here. Yeah, and, and my question now, too, is is who's going to be able to get to the back line to even take out Hoon? I don't even think we have an answer for that on Area 77. Maybe? As we're moving in, we do have the Astral Echo out there. Best player Ooh. comes in with an ultimate, is not able to secure a kill there. Fly Chicken, very low, gets taken out by Yureshi there. 10% left, best player, very low, finds a kill onto the turtle. Is he going to be able to get away? <laughs> you see the auto attacks coming out there. Appraiser's Wrath is not going to be able to do anything there. Sharp. Uh, he says, get down, Mr. President. <laughs> he goes in there, takes the appraiser's wrath, uh, but best player able to get away. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, it, this is not a fight that A77 really wants to take. They were trying to get the objectives, but they were kind of struggling a little bit in terms of uh, getting that last hit. The side of Gaming Gladiators was able to pick that one up themselves. Now, they did trade a few kills in response. A77 was able to get two there, but on the top side here, ISO. Yeah, of uh, uh, Zia. I wow. mean, ISO, the mismatches right now, the outplays that are happening in the side lanes, Game and Gladders don't even really need to send much support, and they're sending support anyway. So if, if it wasn't bad enough that Area 77 is losing the lanes, the faster rotations from Game and Gladiators are helping to even secure these kills for them. Now, two to three, and a 2K, game, uh, 2K gold lead for Game and Gladiators. And it's so interesting that ISO picking up this Hearth, it's supposed to be something like a guaranteed winning in terms of the gold main, right? <laughs> against any marksman, he should have a great time, especially maybe not against something like a Roger, but Exia for sure. Stationary marksman, he should be able to have the time of his life up there. But it, on the other hand, it's the complete opposite. It seems like uh, Zia has complete full dominance and control of that game with or without shark you know he's able to kind of just go above and beyond and get iso on some of these one versus one unfavorable matchup that should typically favor him so gaming glider is coming out with a great strategy with this exia something that i haven't seen that you know people are that confident into picking especially going up against harith but they're definitely making good use of that Ooh, Fly Chicken in between, a sandwich in between new, uh, two members. Final Slash is out. Fly Chicken looking for an escape. The Electro Final Blow is out. Zia finds a kill off screen onto Tarzan. Fly Chicken dashing back. There's no way. Looking for the kill onto Mark Beauty, but is not going to be able to get away. But Gaming Gladiator is able to answer on the opposite side of the map along with a turtle secure. Two for one and a turtle side of GG. This is turning into kind of a one-sided match. Again, GG has been so consistent in setting up, especially when it comes down to that mid to late game strategy. But this time around with the early game lead, it's just going to push them even more forward with the strategies that they have. This is just the dominating performance of the number one team in uh, North America. Playing clean here already for like a 3.5k lead five minutes in not something you want to see from the side of a77 but it's definitely something that you know they can come back from here private yeah, it's, it's definitely going to come down to a lot of these fights if they can play safe here. But you can see Ooh. right here already, best player comes in. Violet Requiem is out, finds a kill. Zia with a full barrage onto the tower is going to go ahead and help Gaming Gladiators secure the mid tower of Area 77. And right now, Area 77 on the back foot looking and uh, struggling right now to try to get farmed up. They're losing engagements. They're losing towers. They're losing lanes. And unfortunately, right now, it's looking like all Gaming Gladiators at the six minute mark. And it's so interesting that ISO is the one that's getting taken off, right? Harith is a hero that has a lot of dashes, a lot of escapability, has kind of, you know, a, a built-in tough boost, especially when there's a lot of members around, but Yurishi bot side here. 
Oh, yeah, he comes in with the Electro Final Blow with the Petrify as well. Shark with the Circling Eagle is able to find two members to pop up there. You can see the Zaman Force down. Iso zooming around the map. Bethlehem comes in. Violet Requiem J able to get out of the way. Full Barrage wow. is out, laying waste to Area 77. Zia finds a kill, followed by Hoon as well right now. What a game. Best player right now, 4-0-4 alongside Zia. We, we need to see the items on the board. I know Zia picked up a DHS. Probably the Corrosion is also available there. Chicken on the top side, able to get that tower also. GG playing pretty much a very, very strong game here. No towers has been even chipped on the red side. They're looking to take the next objective here. That's just going to push their gold lead even higher. We're talking about probably an 8k gold lead at this point, seven minutes in. That's a very, very strong showing for the number one team here. Oh, we do have, uh, they're diving in onto ISO, looking for an escape. Full Barrage is out, trying to Look take down Mark Beauty. They do find a kill there. Yureshi finds a kill onto Shark and Hoon. And Fried Chicken in a little bit of trouble, very low. Coming in is able to shut down Yureshi. Tarzan next on the list as Zia picks up a kill. Zia sitting at seven, zero, and six for gaming gladiators. Yeah, absolute dominating performance. A great team fight. Another three for two winning fight for the Kings of the Kings here. Look at Zia with the gold, man. 4K above ISO. <laughs> DHS corrosion. Looking for that uh, a potential golden staff or even uh, the, the the wind of nature. Um, it's it's going to be extremely hard for this out of A77 to be able to deal with the late game Exia, especially since they didn't get kind of the, the chips in early on where Exia do struggle a little bit in terms of something like the mobility and even the early game damage. But now with a DHF, a corrosion, and he was ulting pretty much full missile barrage underneath the tower. No problem at all. You know, he was sieging up in positions that he probably shouldn't even have to. And there was no punish, no abuse. A77 kind of just taking the heat right now one thing that they do have is a small split pusher there's not much in the side of gg can really deal with yurishi maybe putting the navaria into the far lane to clear from the back side but our lot going for you know the side might be kind of tough here yeah, and uh, right, a little bit of engagement there, but they do decide to back up. But like, and I agree, and this is something I was talking about before, is like, even in a perfect game, when you were pushing back Ixia, eventually she's going to kind of hit that mark. She's going to get to the mid game. She's going to get to that late. We don't really have an answer. Oh, big pop-up lands for best player. On to Tarzan, down to 10%. All the damage coming oh. out of Praiser's Wrath is not going to be enough to save him. Shark picking up the kill for Gaming Gladiators. Yeah, the mobility and the picks. Best player here, 4, 0, and 10. Definitely showing MVP candidates here. 707 from the side of Zia. Definitely also showing, you know, quite the strong gold laner from the side of GG here. They're dominating in both kind of the side lanes here and even in the jungle. And when we looked at the last game, right, GG, they had, you know, Chicken on the side lane just completely dominating there. But here we go, the team fight, uh, the replay on the board. You saw Zia pretty much just full missile barraging underneath the tower. He does not have a care in the world, continues to go and follows through. And they were able to pretty much completely clean up A77 in that small skirmish. Yeah, uh, man, a gaming gladiator. I mean, this, they're basically setting the standard and they're letting Area 77 know right now why they are at the top of the North American ladder. We take a look here at the items. Uh, we already saw 7K there for best player. He's about 3K above uh, his uh, Area 77 jungler Tarzan. And right now only left to the high ground towers. Lord at the bottom. Pressure, not really at the top. You can see the blue... You can see the side area 77 being pushed a little bit uh, at the top. So uh, a good, this does mean that they're going to have the pressure only down here at the bottom. But I mean, right now, Zia and the rest of gaming gladiators, there's not much that area 77 can do even with that advantage. Oh. Coming in with an electo final blow, you're actually going to be able to dash himself to safety. Lord now attacking the core. Big Violet Requiem lands, Tarzan taken down, full barrage is out. Zia finds three kills. Shark finds another one as well 11 0 and 8 for the marksman of gaming gladiators and that's gonna settle game number two that's kind of ridiculous that's kind of ridiculous <laughs> 13 minute game private now we got an 11 minute game the votes have definitely turned it's a 13k gold lead 
but the kings the kings here definitely a strong performance coming up and, and honestly they th this is a team that has dominated pretty much throughout the whole entire season and with this series only two games in they're still just completely it's just completely one-sided and it doesn't seem like a77 have quite the response yet um so far even though they you know honestly had a pretty decent draft here right uh the overall kda 12 uh, 21 5 and 53 lots of kd lots of assists for the side of gaming gladiators they definitely grouped up quite well very very high uh damage coming out from them and man 11 minutes in 21 to 5 you know it's, it's just complete domination from the kings of the kings yeah, an amazing game played by Game and Gladiators. You were talking about the assist right from the early mm. bit of the game. The assists, the the pressure onto the marksman lane that even though ISO was under tower, best player able to find, close the distance with the Violet Requiem, finds the kill very early, and then the pressure just continued to the point that, I mean, we've talked about it before, a lot of the rotations, and we've kind of sometimes ignored the matchups even like you talked about a favorable draft from area 77 where they should be having i want to say favorable instances in their lanes still getting pushed back taking a lot of damage having to go home very uh very early there was just no pressure from the side lanes uh and then unfortunately the rotations just added to that power for gaming gladiators for them to enforce their will and here uh zia i mean man this game uh, mm. a 973 gold per minute 60 1,000 damage there. Tarzan, the sandbag, unfortunately, and best player uh, here taking Shark's place now with uh, 16 <laughs> assists. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Zia in that game, it was only like an 11-minute match, but out damaged pretty much all the mages that came in from the 13-minute match from the game before, so really paints a picture in terms of uh, what GG has in their lineup. Now the head-to-head -head is going to be going for Chicken and Yureshi here. You know, Chicken pretty much had just a little bit more impact with the R lot. Definitely was able to set up great team fights, not dying too much here and there. But Yureshi, I, I felt like there was potential there. Moments of greatness, right? He was split pushing on the top side. We were wondering if the side of GG is able to find the response to deal with the split push that comes out from the better data especially paired up against the r lot but it seems like gg handled it just really really well and consistent right they were able to get the pick off on your issue when he overextended just a little bit get the siege on going watch for the petrify and they were able to kind of disperse when uh the benedetta ultimate came through overall a great game again from the side of gaming gladiators we look at the team five participation 95 percent for best player 95 also for zia it paints the complete story these two are crowned all-star players and of course the supporting actors this time around chicken did not get the team five participation that he was looking for but again the overall win is still a win shark high utility 81 percent and also even hoon getting a few snipes here and there completely just messed up the game messed up <laughs> the strategy for the side of a77 and you know allowed gg to just prevail and dominate this matchup Zia almost got more damage than the whole of Area 77 there. Sans, I want to say Yureshi <laughs> in there. That's just incredible. And you were talking about the matchup mm. between Yureshi and Chicken. Even without the ganks there, I felt like Chicken was really pushing Yureshi uh, alone in the lane. And, and that was happening mm. on both sides. So there just, there just was no pressure from Area 77 on both fronts. And by the time Yureshi was able to start getting into those back lanes, uh, to start getting those split pushing, to be a nuisance, to be going back and forth it was already too late game and gladiators i mean an 11 minute close there uh and that just meant that yureshi just never was able to pick up fast enough uh to, to really kind of become that nuisance that with that the mobility that he has so so what's the strategy that you know these teams have to kind of face up especially against a king of the kings like this right i you know there there's a few options that i think could be viable right one get strong lane clears things like novaria brody one skill hit 
the lane is done with clearing, right? And the, the and, and the lane clear brings in you know a, a a different structure where it is about prolonging the game. It's about tower defensing, and it's about just holding out as long as possible for our members to scale. And A seventy seven has a good draft. You and I, you and I both agree. But in terms of the execution, in terms of how they're willing to prolong the game, maybe give up some of the fights that just are not favorable. A77 is on the short end of stick every single place that they go, whether it is early game small initiations, whether it is getting jungle camps or even like the big map rotations. GG is just standing out on top of that. So I think one thing A77 could do is give them a little bit more insurance in terms of the lane clearing. They, they've struggled to be able to clear the objectives at that at the second lord at 11 minutes 13 minutes in pick up the navaria pick up the fair miss they they provide some sort of bounce some sort of aoe clear maybe projects them into the right direction in terms of the late game because at this moment it definitely seems like gg has the strategy to just be able to walk over a 77 and and maybe potential another 10 15 minute match of this series already over I feel like right now, uh, sans the actual draft, it, it for me, I want to say the the execution and the rotations. I don't want to say Area 77 is slow, but gaming gladiators are just so mm, quick. Uh, as the to where they they meet into those lanes, the first game we saw uh, that even with Tarzan trying to invade, uh, uh, best player was always Fox, there yeah. yep. contesting his his uh, his even his normal Damn. minions in the jungle, not allowing them to kind of steal. Then came the lane pressure. Second game, uh, the lane pressure was so quick from best player uh, mm -hmm. to to kind of close the distance, even under the tower where where Iso thought he was he was uh, all right. I just took a couple of shots. All right, just gonna sit here and recuperate. Boom! In comes best player Violet Requiem, uh, and and it's game over. And you've already started uh, starting losing lane. You started losing gold, mm -hmm. and the pressure just keeps on continuing. I want to say right now, this is a very crisp, very strong gaming GG. gladiators that uh, yep. I want to say it's even st stronger than we've see been seeing in the season right now. And yep. uh, I mean, un that's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate for story for Area 77 right now, who uh, who had that, I want to say, that little glimmer of hope, but it's starting to fade here. If they cannot, like you said, find the working composition, find that confidence uh, in a lot of these rotations. Now... Minotaur first pick is a little bit untraditional, especially with things like Ruby, uh, Matilda being available. Oh, Matilda is actually getting banned out. Some things that they could use against the Minotaur could be something like a Grok, but I kind of want to see A77 uh, try out some of the Asian strategies. Things like the Masha, which has been let open the first two games. Like these teams are going to be going up <laughs> into MSC and they're going to see a Masha. They're going to see a Natan. These Asian metas that are so extremely strong that they've, you know, played over and over in so many of these matches and it's worked out. But inside of A77, it feels like they are still sticking to maybe something, you know, last year, right? The Valentina, Fredgen, <laughs> strong picks. Honestly, love them. They're great. But it has not been working out, especially with the traditional drafts that they have. Bring in something extremely late game, or even let's say a Kaja Natan, right? Or, you know, Masha, right? It brings in that physical, brings in that magic damage. But this time around, see, GG is the one that's trying things out here, experimenting Hoon on an Angela you know into the mage position and the roger potentially flex into the gold lane or even the jungle right and you know this is this is what i kind of want to see from the side of a77 to do go a little bit more off because right now currently gg is just playing way too fast just like you're saying they're on point the strongest five man that honestly we've seen them perform in you know quite the whole entire regular season and now it's it's up to a77 to be able to push this series a little bit further they are already down two games what can they do to bring themselves back into this match that is the important question here <laughs>
Man, uh, we were just talking about the, uh, I want to say the last uh, few games we mentioned about the the power of the Flask of the Oasis. Uh, and right oh, now, oh. Gaming Gladiators, they're about to put on a show. You're going to have the healing from the Minotaur coming out. You're going to have the healing wave, the heart wave, I believe it is, uh, from Angela out there. Angela, mm. and Angela is very viable. One of the few supports that is very viable in the mid game, especially, or in the mid lane, especially in the early game because yep. uh every single wave she does uh put uh, she can do more and more damage uh with every sequential wave that she does there along with the amount of cc she has the regen that she can put on uh she's actually a menace and if you're not careful she can actually start stealing some kills there which i mean you've known throughout if you've played any kind of ranked games with an angela she's pretty prone to being able to steal <laughs> kills so a, a great pickup there which means that you're going to have a ton of sustain for the side of gaming gladiators and they both operate well off of the pick of Roger, who, when he's switching forms, he gets himself a little bit of shield there, which is going to be added by Angela, which is going to be added by Minotaur with the Flask of the Oasis as well. I just want to say, like, it's just... It's a whole different level right now with gaming gladiators uh, with the synergy you see from their drafts, even from the first three, uh, when compared uh, right now, Area 77, they've got that tanky front line. I want to say a little bit of that early game that comes in with the Valentina. She gets a little bit of bonus XP uh, in her kit. I believe it's just part of her passive that she gets more XP uh, as well. And uh, we've got, uh, I want to say Harith is kind of a, a, he needs his items before he really kind of kicks off. So in answer right now, we've only really got Valentina to kind of really hold up and support that early game for Area 77. Okay. I'm going to pray. All right. I like the Kaja. <laughs> I was honest to be like, hey, A77, maybe switch up their strategy. They went Matilda first game, uh, Raphael second game, both photos strong. But maybe go for something like a Masha that brings in the physical damage paired up with the Harith. These are very hard defenses that GG has to bring up. This Ruby, I like it though. It is still a very, very great pick, Private. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in this Yuzong. Um, I mean, Fried Chicken just is a very strong Crazy. XP laner, Ooh. period. Yuzong, on the other hand, I want to say even uh, if you're going up against like evenly, even XP laners, Yuzong can be a little prone to those ganks in the early game. I'd love to see a little pressure from Area 77, get those ganks off early on this Yuzong before he can get his kit that gives him a lot of regen, a lot of sustainability. And then here's the pick that you have been wanting to see is that Natan out there right now for gaming gladiators. Yeah, but but what is it going to be though natan jungle or roger jungle right and uh, <laughs> if we're talking about let's say more phid definitely natan gold paired up with something like an inspire could or not not inspire but purify could negate a lot of the cc versus roger already has a lot of the defensive kind of jump and dashes with a short cooldown so the retry on the roger makes a little bit more sense for me but this is gaming gladiators that we're talking about the have took in the ton in the jungle quite early a77 again a masterful draft coming out from rose the pack with the physical damage pairs so well with the magic damage coming out from the hair if it's not something like an Natan, a nolan the pack definitely shines much brighter in the <laughs> xp lane so again a wonderful draft coming out from both of these teams once again private i don't want to eat my words i like a77's <laughs> draft once again it's not like i'm voting for them i just feel like they are drafting more balance but gg so clean 11 minutes 13 minutes it's 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 hard to tell what they can do with whatever comp that they decide to drop here I was actually worried that this Natan was going to be like a Hanabi pickup because mixed with the shield, the Flask of the Oasis on both Angela and Minotaur, uh, providing more and more shield and then the heart guard, I, I was going to be like, oh man, we're going to see another Hanabi game here. But thankfully we have Natan, a lot of burst damage, Area 77 fighting for their place in the upper brackets. One uh, game winning, uh, potential uh, game winning game here for gaming gladiators. Uh, and here to set the tone for North America. Y'all, y'all hear that, guys? Private said, "Thankfully, no Hanabi." 
<laughs> right? Uh, you know, the, the two teams that we do see the Hanabi come out is going to be DA and potentially Bloodhounds with Uga Booga on it. But most definitely, DA has been the one that's showing on that. It's not going to be this match, but maybe potentially next match, private. But going back to it, you know, we take a look at some of the emblems. You do have a Concussive Blast this time around with a Tank Emblem on uh, Tarzan. So he decides to switch up his strategy here, right? He wants to go for a little bit more tanky, a little bit more utility, a uh, little bit more sustain focus compared to uh, kind of the support with the Impure Rage and the Brute Force build. So it's a little bit change up in that build. Yes, Roger goes into that jungle, letting the Taunt having the Flicker or the Purify, just an extra spell to get him out of harm's way. I think it's a good decision. Once again, Roger, just a little bit more stronger, but back on the mid side, you said the aggression, definitely aggression here so far. Yeah, uh, Shark doing a good job, and uh, I want to say both teams doing a good job, both with their support and mid. Uh, or oh, actually, no, it's uh, a yeah, they're trying their best to kind of uh, keep this the 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 waves here, the wave control here, so that they can rotate a little bit early. Unfortunately, Mark Udy takes a little bit too much damage. He's not going to be able to rotate. He's going to have to go back home, mm -hmm. and that's going to kind of set the tone for gaming gladiators to be able to maybe potentially find themselves a pick before this first turtle. Yeah, I mean, private. It's it's all about the the little things that matter, right? The the little wave management, the little rotations, the the the, the timing where hey, I'm gonna rotate into the XP lane, or I'm gonna hide into the bush, or get this wave clear fast. But top side here already regression. You talked about it, right? Be aggressive on fried chicken early on. Get maybe a pick off. He's prone to a lot of the dives, a lot of the aggressions early on, and I think A77 definitely have a better strategy here. Oh, Black Dragon is out. Flied a chicken looking for a target. Locks on the Mark Cutie. Mark Cutie's going to use that flicker to get himself away. Is oh. able to find a kill onto two members. And that's going to go ahead and set the tone for this next turtle. It is now a 2v or a 3v5 game. 2v5, a 2v4 at this turtle right now. Hoon coming in. Tarzan getting slowed down. Looking for a stun. Appraiser's wrap. Tarzan able to snatch up this turtle. He's looking for an escape. They are locked onto J. Hey, cutie, Mar comes in with the Minoan Fury, able to set up a beautiful escape for Area 77, and suddenly there are signs of life in the extraterrestrials. Not bad, right? Not bad. The signs of life has been shown. A little bit of greatness coming out from Tarzan, able to get the retribution with the bonk coming through. Lots of damage there, lots of potential, but... When you look at kind of like that team fight that got drawn out, the side of gaming gladiator to be able to stack the Yuzong up with the Angela paired up with the Manon's Fury just in the right moment took off not only the flicker but the lives of Mark Cutie. And it was a very, very tough fight uh, for the side of A77 to take, especially since they didn't get uh, the early aggression that they were looking for for the Yuzong. Now we're going to kind of this mid game where every single objective, the Black Dragon is going to be coming up. It's going to be extremely hard to deal with. But one thing that is in favor this time around compared to the last game is that ISO. He's he's doing quite well in the boss side. If not, he's doing much, much better compared to before. There's no early deaths. The one versus one hasn't been too bad and Shark here getting picked. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is a tank. They're still looking for the damage. Heart guard is oh, on there, and that no is way. going to be just enough to save Shark. And that is unfortunate for Area 77 that came in with the I'm offended. And at the top, Yureshi uh, actually gets a heart guard of his own. That's going to save him. He's looking for a kill on the fried chicken. Black Dragon is on. Oh. Are they going to be able to find the damage? They are not. So pretty uneventful for both sides of the lanes here for both teams. Mm, I would kind of have to comment a little bit undisciplined coming out from both of our teams right one early aggression on the boss side shark already knew that that bush was filled with enemies there they burned the heart guard early right a77 on the other hand they had to burn the heart guard on the top side paired up with the black dragon so i think it's a little bit of an advantage for the side of a77 here especially with no black dragon available and you know technically no heart guard on whom just yet so far so a77 theoretically should be able to get this with no problem but again a lot of ultimates have Ooh. been used already yeah best player coming in looking for an opportunity <laughs> just like that oh able my. to scoop it up but no and fury is out heart guard saves the best player and area 77 unable to answer back and 
everyone walks out private like what is this they had a two-man little unit coming through with best player getting the retribution off shark being the last one leaving into that team fight flickers completely clean gaming gladiators lose no member with a disadvantage in numbers able to get the retribution that's bad bad news for the side of a77 they have to find a way to be able to get back into this game private yeah uh right now you can start seeing uh yureshi already does lose his tower that's very early at the five minute mark best yeah. player putting on some damage i mean the 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 team fight there i mean it's just you you're exactly correct best player just walked into it able mm -hmm. to get the retry and then shark uh, securing the escape as we have another here a lot more damage coming on to mark cutie but they Sheesh. are able to kind of create that distance yeah so it does seem like the new roger build a lot of people like going for that wind into the endless maybe even into the bod that uh iso did in the very first match here so a little bit of a, a build difference here shark getting pinned a little bit but you know there's not going to be that much damage output from the side of a77 yet just so far in top side here they he <laughs> yurishi you're talking about him earlier gets picked off by the combination of the angela and the black dragon yeah, I mean, we were talking about Zaman forces out for ISO. No and Fury looking, catches two members, and now focusing on the JQD appraiser's wrath is out as well. Hoon finds himself a kill with the hearts guard. Black Dragon into the back lines, looking for a kill on the Mark Cutie. Oh, Fine, chicken, chicken able to find it as Tarzan finds a kill onto Shark and two members, Area 77. Tarzan gets taken out next. ISO fighting for his life. Another Zaman force comes down, but it is not enough. Best player cleans house another clean sweep from the side of gaming gladiators and what's interesting is that they actually had hoon on the top side the whole entire time pushing out that wave and then suddenly hoon's back here in business oh man nowhere is safe right now jake you need to be very careful especially because we've seen how far best player can dive into enemy lines with that lycan pounce and the heart guard combination he dives just like that underneath the tower with the heart guard secured with hoon at his heels mm, and you know we honestly thought that a77 kind of had more of you know uh a fighting chance especially with a lot of the the uproars of them doing great in scrims but this time around they're getting quite dominated in pretty much all areas of the match i think their draft is quite decent but they're just losing out in some of these rotations the side of gg is just playing so extremely clean so efficient and every little small skirmishes they're just getting wins on wins nine to one is the overall they've only dropped one death eight minutes in and completely destroyed everyone in the side of A77. Ooh, best player actually a little, almost caught out of ways, but that's just the value you get. This is, I mean, I was talking about how much I missed seeing a Roger jungle, how quick, oh, Flight Chicken, just the mechanical ability there, not even afraid. Appraiser's Wrath comes out, he's like, nah, just dives behind Tarzan, uh, evades the entire thing, and still up here against two members. And now steal. the rest of the team in tow, five. His days are not long for him. Mm finally get one for the side of a77 they had to send five members onto the top side that's good right you know a77 able to get a kill here and there prolonging the match a little bit best player though might be caught out in a very bad situation but i think he's turning that around even just with the heart guard himself Ooh, Minoan Fury does catch and Mark Cutie does go down. This, I mean, this is what we saw, I want to say like two years ago, the Hearts Guard and the Roger. Uh, I mean, it's just <laughs> such a lethal combination and uh, how uh, how aggressive you can be with it. There's nowhere safe, especially under the tower. You can see here, you're actually trying to put some damage on the best player who is looking for an escape, but he's not really scared. He out levels them by about three levels right now. So, I mean, he's not really uh, afraid of them. Fly chicken getting his own out the rest of them shark doing a good job of just be creating this wall in himself uh for the rest of area 77 that provides more than enough room for a best player to pick up this lord mm. it does seem like they're like you know the black dragon was used 
I feel like a little bit prematurely, you know, potentially GG could bait out the side of A77 to see if they even want to contest this objective, right? Save the Black Dragon, look for a team fight, potentially even get some pickoffs that uh, they are looking for. And if A77 do fall for the trap, right, they're going to lose members trying to get the Lord. And if not, the side of GG both can have the Black Dragon available and get it. But Hoon here, there's no way he's going to be able to play this, huh? Oh my gosh. We were just talking about mechanical ability. Ability. I know best player gets the the kill there, but Hoon, the way he dodged those those uh, dashing punches from Pagito there at Yureshi, I know the frustration is starting to set in. Mino and Fury is out, followed by the Black Dragon into the back line. Tarzan able to get away, but Iso pays for it with his life. Another pop-up on the J Cutie, who is not long for this. Tarzan looking like he is next up on the line, but is going to dash himself to safety. Zia comes in with the Entropy, no. finishes off the last two members of area 77 that is a wipe it's just your reshi left and i do not think this is go it's going to matter this is going to be a clean sweep for <laughs> gaming gladiators against area 77 oh man private <laughs> 13 13 11 and 11 a dominating performance come out from the side of gaming gladiator this is something that we've expected right but it's not not in this sort of fashion, not in, in, in how clean cut and precise and efficient this five man unit was able to perform in this stage of the game, right? We we knew they were all suiting up, putting on their best performance, you know, getting that new nice haircut, preparing for the matches. It could be the massages. It, it could be getting the sleep earlier, going to the gym. But this performance, I don't know what Gaming Gladiator has behind their back. Cause dude, 13, 11 and 11, this is just, you know, domination after domination after domination. The drafts were, you know, very competitive coming from, from both sides. But when you take a look at the match, when you take a look at the time, the gold, the damage output, the tankiness, it all just goes in favor of the side of gaming gladiators. This is a team almost, you know, showing like, like no sort of weaknesses here, Private. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, 11 minute game here, seven towers to none. I, I, I was talking, I, I've been so focused on what uh, Area 77 and how much they have improved to kind of get to the top of the ladder that I almost kind of ignored. Uh, we can take a look here at the stats here too. It's a three, zero and 13, 13. for Hoon there, Ooh. four, zero and five for Zia. Uh, still best player, still kind of leading up there, six, one and five. But as I was talking about, like I kind of forgot that the gaming gladiators they they in they even improved they improved to such a degree that like it's almost like it is unnecessary because they're already at the top of north america but they showed me a level here just like you were saying they came with their with their best slacks on with their best haircuts rested the they ate their tie. weenies in the morning like everything here was so precise by them you could take a look here at the some of the stats here <laughs> even shark and uh, stealing away they don't even get the sandbag uh from gaming gladiators a uh, shark's gonna go ahead and steal that up with the 67,000 damage taken there and gaming gladiators they just put on a show of uh like i said precise and and just i mean just great gameplay here yeah i mean in, in terms of their improvement yes right we expect them to become the champions of north america but this improvement to be able to get onto this next level, it definitely feels like they've been able to reach it, especially with, uh, you know, in, in terms of their last meeting in the regular season, <laughs> it wasn't this crispy clean. I believe it was like almost a 20, 25 minute match. It was one of the longest matches in NACT. So, you know, this time around for them to have such a strong show in 13 to 11 and 11, I think those are the three timers it it paints the picture that gg is out there for blood right now the suit and tie is strong they are on they're pretty much on their best performance nothing is going to stop them i don't know if a77 is going to be able to do it a second time around right now it may just be all up to the the winners of our next game because <laughs> gg just swept these guys in such a dominating fashion you know, we can take a look at some of the damage dealt across the board. Best player stands out here with 45k damage. We talked about chicken's impact here. 34k damage dealt on the XP lane. You know, damage is just so spread out throughout the tide of GG. Even the supporting actors like the Minotaur and the Angela do not 
fall quite behind here. Hoon, 100% MVP on this Angela. This man was everywhere from the XP to the base to inside every single player on the side of GG. Just healing, sustaining, saving. And those heart guards were so impactful. We saw boss side, you know, Minotaur was getting picked off and typically Angela's don't ult on tanks, but Shark worthy, right? He did get that ultimate off set up for a great team fight here. And GG able to prevail in this series, dominating once again like it's it's just absolute breathtaking Liz. yes breathtaking breathtaking <laughs> the fact that my predictions are the same as you guys now because <laughs> you guys both Woo! lost this one <laughs> but um i think for yeah for this series um i expected more from area 77 even though um reality wise i, I did think gg was going to take him just because of their win streak so far but I was expecting, you know, maybe one or two games clinch from GG. But it seemed like you guys mentioned GG also improved while well, everyone else is improving. So that's something we have to look out for. Yeah, that's a, it's almost I'm almost kind of ashamed that it, that's not a, a point that I've brought up before. I've been talking about how a lot of the teams have stepped up here in North America. They've been wanting to face that dragon of uh, gaming, uh, gaming gladiators. They've been wanting to try to take it to them. And I kind of completely ignored the fact that gaming gladiators can still improve too, to uh, uh, a, a level that uh, we just haven't seen here before from them, uh, especially in the season. Like that was... Uh, they had some great games during the season, but how they played here to, tonight uh, against Area 77, like without a doubt, is probably the crispest, uh, the crispiest I've ever seen them uh, with their rotations, with their ganks, uh, with their dives, and 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 even with the drafts as well. What what's their secret sauce, Liz? I want to know. I you know I typically with these shows we kind of have that interview coming up and I just want to know what their secret sauce is do they get that massage like they they got someone coming into the house giving it to them maybe getting <laughs> get their pedicure in the mornings what? like what is their day-to-day -day life because honestly the performance that they had here it was unexpected from any of us casting here we thought this game could have went to the fourth to the fifth game we thought you know it could have been a long drawn 20 minute matches no base towers left but no it was none of that private like it was no towers defeated winning every single trade every single team fight like what is their secret liz I mean, I guess the GOAT is wrong and Trek stands corrected. But um, <laughs> what we did notice on the on the cam, I don't know about massage. I don't know what's going on with Yue's head right there. But um, <laughs> we did see best player is, seems like he made himself to Vegas. So, and, and best player and Hoon are together playing that game. So mm. maybe that adds to the synergy. I mean, it's hard that you find two players playing in an online tournament so far that they're in the same room. I mean, that probably brought more synergy. I mean, best player had like 90% kill participation for many of those games. That's gotta be something. I mean, he's Why? everywhere on the Wi-Fi buff. Wi-Fi yeah, buff. Yeah, so let's guess who the MVP is, Private. Uh, who? <laughs> Uh, Zia? <laughs> yeah, it's Zia. I was about to say, man, I, I, even in that last game, he didn't have a huge score in that last game, but uh, man, uh, he was dominating his lane. Even I want to say in game two, where we thought that he was going to have trouble, even alone. Like, yeah, yeah, you can see here, Iso on the Hareth, who was supposed to actually have a problem uh, with the uh, uh, Ixie, was supposed to have a problem there. Even before Shark could come up and help him out, he was dominating his lane. And you could see here, no answer like Yui was talking about no answer for the full barrage of Ixia just cleaning house for gaming gladiators here and 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 what's nice about Zia as a player is that he's not afraid to use different picks in different scenarios it's almost like you know the side of gaming gladiators know to set up Zia for kind of like that late pick it's not always about you know prioritizing something like a carry or a clod he's willing to play some off picks right the exia gets put off the Arithal, which he's done a clean job losing lane but completely dominating and changing the fact after that and now with the performance of the Natan, it, it, it really like well rounds his, his, his hero pool, his character. He's able to just perform and dominate at such a high like standings. It's it's wild, really. 
I mean, you were going on about the Natan, how it's a better pick than Roger, <laughs> and I guess Zia heard you and answered your call with that uh, <laughs> with that stunning Natan performance. Now we have an interview with best player. I mean, judging by the fact that he has face cam today, so finally we get to invite <laughs> best player here on the stage and also his um, side chick, uh, Gosu Goon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Goon. Thanks for answering. joining us, Goon and a best player. Um, we mostly want to interview a best player, but it's okay. You're here for me too, Goon. <laughs> All right, so oh, best player, how did you end up at Hoon's place? Uh, you know, I live down the street from him. What's actually. going on? Uh, um. What do you mean? Nah, okay, on some real, on some real stuff. Um, my internet is pretty bad, so I decided to come to Hoon's place. Um, he let me come uh. here for it, so it worked out pretty well. Plus, the team synergy is way better. Yeah. Also. Yeah, we noticed today you guys did really well. And did you think that it, being at Hoon's place really helped you guys perform the way uh, you did today? Yeah, a lot of things worked better. The, the internet, the mm -hmm. team synergy, everything just worked a lot better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to know: is Hoon one of those basement gamer boys, or does does he actually have a clean apartment? Uh, pretty clean. Pretty clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay. Good. <laughs> What, what's going on? <laughs> oh yeah. They well, just sent <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whoa, what is that? That's huge. I don't know, it's huge. It's another one of your poster. <laughs> wow. I mean, I guess we have to find out that review on your own stream. So enough nosiness about your bromance. So for the game that we just saw, um, what is the most contributing factor that you feel for that draft in game two? Because you had Guinevere, Novaria, Arlot, Ixia, Matilda. That's a very good draft and that's a very MPL draft. So what do you feel? I mean, the, the team synergy in that draft is really good. And then our team synergy in general mm -hmm. is really good. So, you know, it worked out, you know, really, really well to, to, how, to how it was supposed to be. I can't believe they mm -hmm. opened all that. That's literally our that's comfort heroes. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Maybe they were I mean, they did the already. Jeez. They lost Frederick and opened everything else. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, even the first game, yeah, even I mean, Fred it... made a mistake. <laughs> My Fred goes crazy. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah, very, very crazy and very well. So. Um, we saw a lot of different variety of heroes that you guys pulled out. For game three, why did you pick Roger Jungle? I mean, did you want to pull that E Girl vibe from Hoon, or does it mean that Marksman Jungle is like y YSS and then Ranger are also coming back? Well, um, well for me, I've been I've been I've been playing a lot of rank and you know I like Roger a lot. And <laughs> Roger Jungle isn't completely not a thing, and Roger Gold is already a thing, so we can flex it as the best Roger in NA, you know? So um Wow. Yeah, so wow. worked out pretty well. Worked out pretty well. Do you agree? Best Roger in NA, Hoon? Maybe second best after me. Jeez. My Roger goes crazy. They haven't seen it yet. Whoa. Whoa, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, best for, do you think Hoon is the best e girl in NA? The best Angela? Yup. Do you see his KP that game? 100%. Actually, next level. Yeah, I play with uh, Eager Angela so many times. I kind of adapted the playstyle. Yeah. It's working mm -hmm. pretty well. All the right. Paquito wanted me, <laughs> I mean... but he couldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. So, so who did you give it to? <laughs> Wait, Best player. Never mind. Okay. So, <laughs> last, last thing before I don't want to keep you guys up for too too long. So, is GG considering a coach for? Um, the later stages, potentially Vegas, if you guys do make it. Uh, I mean, maybe, but it's already like, I think too late. But if we qualify for international, let's say we win the grand finals, then I think we'll definitely consider a coach. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, why did you guys not consider a coach so far? Because we know that previously before the international stages you guys did have like a last minute coach but do you think it could have been better if you had a coach early on i think the fact that we like the coach also needs to have a synergy with the team i think you know you can't just have a, like just because he's the best coach it would work perfectly for your team last minute because we've tried 
having coaches last minute and then it usually doesn't work out so well. And then at this point of the NACT, it's almost heading towards the grand finals. Maybe we're just sticking to what we've been doing and we, we're winning. So I don't see yeah, so too it's, much urgency in yeah. having a coach. I mean, congratulations on that very dominating series. Are you going to be in Hoon's uh, house again for the next week? Because when you guys face um, for the next weekend, it, the winner bracket, you might face, you know, your biggest enemy. <laughs> in uh, possibly, possibly, possibly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Yep. All right. We look forward to see you guys back together as one next weekend. So best of luck to your upcoming, upcoming matches. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. GG. 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 <laughs> uh, it's, it's nice this is when you jump in private. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see them uh, together and enjoying the games and uh, uh, providing uh, a little bit more synergy for them as well. And he's and Hoon was absolutely right. <laughs> I was talking about it during the game, but like uh, Yureshi uh, tried to come at him with the Paquito with uh, some of those uh, those dash punches, <laughs> and Hoon just sidestepped to the left, <laughs> sidestepped to the right until until Shark was able to close the distance. And uh, we I, I saw right from the draft as well when when as soon as they gave shark the matilda i was like oh man <laughs> like there's 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 very oh, yeah. few things i know there's some rules there uh that uh, we've been talking about in north america ban matilda drink water and things like that but uh probably number third is if you do let matilda out don't give it to shark <laughs> because uh he's super strong on it no, I mean, it definitely feels like the side of GG was very well prepared in terms of uh, this series. Uh, a, a, a lot of people, you know, may root for Ace 97, even me in private, you know, we were rooting for them, but it definitely feels like the side of GG cleaned up a lot of the things that um, they've been working on throughout the regular season. They were able to uh, negate a lot of the weaknesses and make it into a lot of the strengths. You talked about the drafts, right? Like a lot of drafts were banned, were focused bans towards specific players like the joy taken away from the from best player but you know now it feels like they they they've been able to so like improve their hero pool it's so well rounded and they're able to get so many pickoffs and now pushing them in with a series win like this their confidence is just radiating off of each other like this is a dominating team and with that interview it definitely shows the confidence that they need to be able to uh take the crown here yeah, confidence and I guess internet because it seems like <laughs> best player's internet is not the best. So I guess the Vegas internet is better. But you guys do bring a great point that they have a huge hero pool, right? And that's very important in tournament scene when the enemies can't ban you out and then you have so many different varieties that you can pull in. That's a lot to work with. So definitely for today, we saw the different hero pools we thought from every single member of GG, which is pretty impressive, actually. But yeah, you wait. I want to know, what is your strat this season with your predictions? Because you're, you know, like left and right. Like sometimes you're straight up going for that victory, especially the first week when you got a lot of things that we actually got wrong. But then afterwards, like the, today, I mean, did you did you actually expect A77 to take the victory against GG? I mean, private, we know he's a A77 fan. <laughs> what about what about you? You know. Like, we all know what the statistics say. Like, everyone sees what has happened uh, in terms of the standings, in terms of their past performances. But, you know, especially when we go into the playoffs, I like to spice things up uh, a little bit more. Okay. Even if it's like, you know, a little bit more of a far reach. I. I do think we are at the NACT private, you know, said it perfectly in the beginning where this is the strongest and the most competitive NACT we've ever had. And the 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 the, the caster predictions do paint that same exact story, right? You know, we're getting like 33% losses here and compared to the previous seasons before where each match was, you know, quite pinpoint straight. My strategy this time around is I just want, you know, more opportunities for different teams and i do believe they all have it in them to be able to push through but it's all about the preparation it's all about doing your homework watching those mpls getting those you know ube uh like 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 team bonding experiences and you know try to come up with a strategy that works well and you know even hoon said right the synergy that they have before their draft great 
now with the new draft coming in even better and they talked about the coach where the synergy is not there so i think anything could happen this time around a77 fell short liz but i can promise you all my votes are going to be matching up for the rest of the week <laughs> all right okay <laughs> there he said it okay we're gonna hold him accountable starting from the next series okay i want to see who you voted for the next series but in the end you know i think i think you got a good, great point and he has a really good strategy because now with what he, what happened last season now it seems like whichever team you weigh roots for there's always an excuse right the fans are like yo he's voting for the underdogs or yo he's winning on his predictions you know can't lose with the ua strat so maybe that's something that i'm gonna look into next season but until then we have the most anticipated match of for a lot of fans for people watching today we have G oh, we have DA versus BTK. BTK 2.0 versus BTK 3.0. Who will come on top? Let's find out after a short break. Fight 
of the kingdom! <laughs> We'll go over to Tarzan Cutie with three kills. Oh, yeah. A little bit of engagement happening. Yeah. Pro Destroy is going to be able to shut down. ISO first kill on the board for Fiends. Last Sandy going out as well. May be able to find an answer, but no. Marquita with the response back. Full dive in with the last insanity IMU. Tarzan will get one, gets two. Takes down your cutie and pro destroy. Kohari will fall, making that a triple. He wants the maniac, though. Reinar will fall. Tarzan <laughs> cutie will get it. Speaking of matchups, though, aggression inside of the jungle. Four members of Legacy trying to chase down. One member, Jolie, is going to find Zia, though. Shark. Trying to rotate around, trying to get out of there <laughs> with the chip. It is one this one is on the, the board, slowest though. car chase ever. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if we'll be able to get out, though. Best player wants it. Uh, yeah, you do see a, a little bit of aggression there from Kuya Ken coming into the jungle, but he grabs Fanny instead of the buff, and you kind of want the buff so that it resets. Oh, he's looking for it. I think we did get a retribution on a best player, though. Well, but he got a kill. <laughs> so I, I would say that's a fair trade. The gold lane is still doing quite well. R is not that far behind. He has quite a high damage. So there's still opportunity there. Ooh, Ooh big I'm offended on a three under the tower. But the Minoan's Fury lands on a three more. More damage coming out. The Demir's passion able to lock on a zero. But zero goes down. T takes the shots to the face and does not fall. Yato, Melon picking up a kill. Devious activity. Find three members without losing a single one. Now they're just playing kind of like the bully bots. 13 and 1. And they're able to just pick apart Night Horde here. Ooh, Momoi does get the I'm offended on. Ooh. Followed up by the bombardment. Yato taking out three members off the field for DA. And Kush is out of town along with Melon. Nice wall coming from Amoy. Full barrage connects. The damage. Yato able to help him out. Bosch might not be able to get away. No R gets the killing spree. And now Devious Activity looking for the response. A little bit of damage. Honestly, Ori Kush able to find the kill. But R is just unloading. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Members of DA are falling. Oh, my foe takes the Lord. And Melon's on the run. R on the chase. A lot more 50-50s this time around. You can see the side of Night where They have a lot of damages that is actually oh. available here. And R here. Oh. oh, gets the kill. Can they get that advantage on the opposite side of map? And zero, even down zero two, is able to do so. Ooh, Minoan's Fury plus the Shadow Stampede. And two, two kills go down. Melon gets them both. They might potentially look to push here. Yeah, using the Nether Realm just so they can really focus in. Everyone locking onto the base, and that is going to be it. Devious activity. Take game number three for another sweep, sending Night Horde to the lower bracket. Maybe the high IQ play. Eat it, Zia! Final hit to Shark, able to get out of there. All right, let's go, Lord. He's kind of getting a little bit of iffy right now. Yep. <laughs> Can we do it? Any help, any help, any help. Oh, wait, if they all come to Lord, Chip, teleport. Oh my end. god. No, I can't. Any enemy to TB. Yo, Franco ulti, Franco ulti. Oh, they can't kill her. Nice. Just do Lord, do Lord, do Lord. All right. You have TB, Shark? Yeah, I'm TB now. Help me, please. You're not gonna fight me. 
Good night. Shush! Shush! I'm back. I bought. <coughs> Man, I need a tower lock, Jono. Oh. Out there, Joy. Joy, 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 Joy. Holy sh. Dead, 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 dead. I reset, Shark, hold someone. I come back. Oh, we're nice. Right now. Oh my god. That's I really just... oh. My shit almost gone. Kill Franco, kill Franco. Oh my god. Have fun interview, Mr. Carlos. No, I'm not doing it. Bro, you haven't done a single oh, yeah, interview. Boy. You have to do it. You have to do it. You haven't done a single interview. Nobody did it, everybody. Mid, meron pa mid ngayon. G? Ibat dan. Mid dan lang, mid dan lang. Mid muna, mid muna, mid muna. Lord, tap, 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 tap. Motok tap. Pwede pa sag tap, ah. Tara, tara. May grip sa bot, oh. Pre, basag, palo. Ulti. Silahin ako. Ubos. Ubos ako. Tara, busin pre. Ga*** nyo tawari pre. Ga*** nyo tawari ga*** And nine, nine na. Tamad na ako. Ga*** ko ah. Naku, hero tayo. Uy. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
kneel before your queen. It won't take long, I promise. Yeah. 
stars be our witness tonight. Overwhelming sensation. You don't want to fight the temptation. Sit patient as we change the nation. The drugs, the keys, all connected. Blowing like currents, the vibes so electric. Burning just like a comet. Destined for greatness, and no one can stop it. I know that leads to heaving.
ぜ違うんだよ。Hey, come on, come on. We'll go over to Tarzan Cutie with three kills. Oh, yeah. A little bit of engagement happening. Yeah. Pro Destroy is going to be able to shut down. ISO first kill on the board for Fiends. Last Sanity going out as well. May be able to find an answer, but no. Marquita with the response back. Full dive in with the last Insanity IMU. Tarzan will get one. Gets two. Takes down your Cutie and Pro Destroy. Kohari will fall, making that a triple. He wants the Maniac, though. Brynar 
will fall. Third and Cutie will get it. Speaking of matchups, though, aggression inside of the jungle. Four members of Legacy trying to chase. Ooh, are you guys excited? We're back from a slightly longer break than we've been used to having, but the teams are ready and we are ready for this next match. DA versus BTK. Lots to discuss here, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, we were we've been talking about it. The uh, the orphans, the BTK 2.0 versus BTK 3.0 devious activity. Uh, this one, there's there's a there's a lot behind it, and I'm sure it's uh, electrified the viewers. It's electrified uh, the cast here. I'm ready to go for it. Do 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 we do we say this is kind of like a like a team kill type of thing? Like they're both on the same side and they're just going at each other, like. I mean, this is th th these these two teams are quite strong here. I know BTK did get the win last time as a sweep, um, but a lot of people have been DA fans and they've been kind of on this uh, train to see them rise out of uh, the top winners bracket. I know I'm one of them. Um, I'm I'm definitely sure there's people out there. But again, you know, this is going to be definitely one of the closest match, uh, especially in the upper brackets. I know last one we said it was close. This one's definitely going to be close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last one, we thought it would be closer. But this one, I, I do feel that um, with Joy Blotch adding back into the roster, it's more closer to what we call a um, BTK 2.0 or the Fallout Brothers, like I would like to call it, or the fans <laughs> calling it Orphan Match. But whatever it is, we have the trio, the um, XBTK trio against their father, Amova Zane, and his new favorite, New Kids. And, you know, judging by DA's performance last weekend, solid i think there's a lot to look out for it oh yeah it's yeah it's, well i mean the da uh btk beat da but it was not this roster and in talks with uh last night with uh, yato uh this this current roster was the original roster that was supposed to come out with da uh something that they showed us last week too like i mean i believe them showing with that performance they had for us uh against the night horde last weekend this was a, a rejuvenated uh a a quicker to respond their rotations were were solid and i mean a lot of these team members uh joy Boz, um uh t yato they've been playing together for so long and it's shown in the synergy that they have not just that but then the addition of melon to the main roster he was i mean he was basically a main roster already he's been playing for them i want to say for the last uh three or four weeks now too as well and has a huge place uh, a highlight reel for them as well but we're gonna go ahead and take a look here melon in the gold lane joy baj yato kush on the jungle and a t this is uh the team that mobile moba zane raised he uh fed them their milk he brought them up called them monkeys at one point but these monkeys were able to surprise op just a year ago then unfortunately this year zane went out for some milk and never came back actually he did came back but he came back with a brand new family uh <laughs> and uh these guys were left to uh fend for themselves and fend for themselves they have they've created this brand new team da and have been wildly successful i I, 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 I do want to, you know, try to change the narrative a little bit um, for the side of DA. These guys have had success before Mobazane came into kind of the picture, right? Um, you know, I believe they were on Ackerman and before that they were A77, especially Yato was there. I know T was there for a period of time back then when there was kind of like Galaxy, Merciless. I know Kush has been involved in that org too. Um, so these players, even before PTK, they've been very, very strong, of course, uh, with the success of the upset uh, in the offline tournaments, you know, we kind of viewed them as kind of like the BTK 2.0 and now forming a team uh, to go against, uh, you know, the man himself. It definitely paints that narrative. But, you know, once again, these these guys have done it all even before Zayn was involved in their uh, competitive place. That's a great story. I mean, uh, they sw swapped out the different Ackermans this time, it seems. So let's take a look at BTK's roster private. 
Uh, of course, we're going to have a basic bringing up the Marksman Lane, uh, new to the Rome but shining Cold World, and Nicolette in the mid. I want to say a uh, fan favorite for North America right now. Moba Zane, of course, on the jungle, and the goat himself in the XP lane, Mielo. Uh, uh, just a strong team, and I said it yesterday too. One of the strongest versions of BTK that I think we have yet to see here in North America. America. And it, it's it's very interesting that, you know, basic, we've seen him perform well. Milo, definitely. You know, these are kind of the off lanes that technically don't re, re, uh, involve a lot of synergy in terms of being able to hold their lane. But on the other hand, this new mid duo where it is Cole World and Nicolette, this is something, you know, quite different. We haven't seen this combination before. They've played against each other plenty of times. And even Cole World came from a jungle position into that marksman position and now finding himself and he also played mage for Gosu for a period of time. And now finding himself in the roam position for BTK. This man has done it all. I'm super excited to see how they face up against kind of the Yato synergy with Joy Baj, especially back in the days where they had so much success. So it's definitely going to paint a very, very competitive picture for both of these teams. Yeah, and if you guys haven't checked out our little round table that we did inviting both Yato and Midnight, Coach Midnight from BTK, we had a discussion about how um, and, and why they put in Cold World on the roam position. And Midnight ta told us that um, Cold World, his game sense and macro is on another, on another level, which is true. I mean, Cold World has done it all in different positions. And this time he knows exactly what Mobazane needs and where it needs where he needs a support as a jungle main. So I think that's something that we have to pay attention to this season. And the longer the season goes, the more practice they have as a synergy. And we have some of the most confident players on each individual lanes, like Milo, Mia Goat. He's got to be the most confident at two laner in NA, <laughs> if not, you know, in, a, <laughs> in um, YouTube at least. And then also we have um, we have Basic, who is also making plays. So let's see what our casters feel about this matchup. Yue, you said that, <laughs> and I quote, <laughs> that your predictions are going to be correct for the rest of the night and the rest of the weekend. Liz, so Liz, explain Liz, Liz, yourself here. <laughs> we, we, we talked about this, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. DA is a very, very strong team. Yes, BTK did get the sweep, but this is a complete new DA. And with, you know, roster swaps like Joy Baj and Melon in this time around, I do think DA has practiced enough. And their performance against Night Horde was so clean and precise. I do think they have a great chance to take on the Bloodthirsty Kings this time around, Private. <laughs> uh, I think I used up all my hopes for the uh, Area 77 pick. So this one, I'm just going to stick with statistics. And right now, BTK have shown uh, that they are a powerhouse. Uh, we talked a little bit about Cold World and uh, especially coming in as a brand new Rome for the team has even been like one of the most integral parts of BTK, especially in their victory over gaming gladiators, giving them their one and only loss. So, I mean, it's, it's hard. I'm hard pressed to choose against bloodthirsty Kings in this matchup. One and only, um, one and only match and one and only moto for the season, which is drink water and bad Matilda. So that's gotta be something that we give it to Cold World. I mean, uh, with this matchup, regardless, it's either UA taking the bottom of that tier with the prediction list, or I dragged Private down with together because we are all neck to neck right now. So a lot to um, look out for. And I think it really depends on how how well BTK performs this time. I mean, sometimes if it almost seems like BTK performs so much better on their good days. And then it, it depends on how the players are feeling today. So I'm looking forward to see how they do today but before that we have another giveaway for our lovely fans who are watching right now i like how we're doing this early guys this gets gets us pumped and gets us, us ready with our phones out so on the screen you have permanent skins 30 permanent skins for granger i mean are we seeing marsman coming back guys yes i mean 
Yes, I mean, <laughs> we've yes. been seeing uh, the Roger, especially for the Roger right now. And in uh, there's been little whispers of Granger. He's, he's having an effect. He's maybe not at the tippy top of the uh, the iceberg of comp competitive play, but uh, he's still hanging on by a tiny little thread in the jungle position. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Granger, it's, 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 it's definitely a, a pretty interesting hero, especially now with the Roger coming back into... You know, shining some light in the jungle, there's definitely a possibility that the Granger comes in. And, and you know, if you take a look at a lot of the, the Asian metas, a lot of them are experimenting with a lot of the 131s from back then, where they put the two fighters in. So, you know, we do get kind of a, a, a breath of fresh air. So, you know, definitely go and grab that Granger skin because you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he's going to be meta for uh, the next MSC, you know? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it all goes round and round in circles. And let's see if this match will go your way. You way. My way. You way. <laughs> My way. It will. Well, it I'm will. actually... <laughs> of course. No, no, yeah. no panicking right now. <laughs> I mean, we talked a little bit about it last night. Midnight and Yato on the same stream. Both very confident in their team's ability here. I want to say uh, Yato a little bit more outspoken. Midnight uh, a little bit more reserved. Doesn't want to give out too much. But we were talking about it, especially against the game uh, against Gary Area 77 and Gaming Gladiators. There's a lot of uh, picks out there. There's a lot of bands you can put, which leave open still many picks that can be utilized and we're going to see how well both of these teams can kind of utilize that we've talked about the Lu Yi Nicolette a special uh has uh, I want to say even before Lu Yi was the Lu Yi that we all were fearing Nicolette was still feared on the Lu Yi back in her I want to say team sexy days uh a team that she was on I want to say two years ago she brought in and actually was one of the ones that made me a fan of course we're gonna see that banned out by TA they're not gonna go ahead and take the chance of her getting her hands on that mm, now with what BTK kind of has provided with us with a lot of the past matches you know something like an Harith a pack coming out from their silings is something that we've definitely been uh quite used to with the Louis being banned on the board things like the Valentina and the Varya becomes a little bit more prio here it seems like both of these teams are looking for some target bans right DA painting the story that hey we're gonna focus on Nicolette's hero pool potentially first picking uh a mage of our choice things like the Vaxana and the Varya is still available and for the side of BTK you know after that first pick especially since louis is being banned out things like the ruby the arla can be available to flex onto that roam position to you know to make things a little bit interesting of course you know the dominance of the utility style jungle right kush and mobazane both are very very pro efficient on uh heroes like the akai the barats the fredrin the boxia so the lot going to be quite available the fredrin gets taken out you know i'm expecting something like a mage first pick into a uh, utility jungle like a boxia as the counter uh for the early games of this draft i was gonna say but do you give up the barats to btk give it or do you give take it. that away just uh, <laughs> you just give say it. just give it uh the one thing is uh that i want to say da of of any of the teams here for btk uh da probably know btk the most and they have the yes. most I want to say personal experience uh, with the team. Kush used to be a member of BTK way back before uh, Yato and all of them. So, I mean, they know each other. If anybody's going to be able to kind of know perhaps his rotations, where he likes to go, the aggression he likes to have to try to steal, mm. uh, which we've seen. Zane can kind of get caught. He's prone to really want to stall the enemy jungler to start taking his minions early, uh, and he can get caught sometimes. So we'll see if uh, either Zane has become a little bit more disciplined or if da is able to find uh find zane and quickly collapse onto him wow so a very neutral start in my opinion for both of these teams right a first pick cc doesn't really give away too much um the same thing with btk right uh the export against cc a matchup that we've seen pretty much numerous of times is something that's not out of the ordinary Nicolette early Valentina pick. It definitely feels like we have a rise of a early game Valentina in the draft. It's not something that has been significantly prioed, um, but you know, especially in our upper brackets, it seems like a lot of these teams really like it. Now you talked about the Brats. Brats comes out paired up with the Navaria. 
decided BTK could opt to, you know, go for a marksman and deny some of the marksman picks and, you know, rely on Zane's wide hero pool, especially since they're probably banning out the Boxia, the, the Akai, or pick something up for MOBA Zane, let Cole World get a, a better opportunity, especially in the last pick, because BTK, they do have the last pick available. Last pick roam is definitely something, uh, a very good strategy that people like. Yes, MOBA Zane picks up the Akai, so no jungle denies. The side of BTK missing a marksman and a roam, and the same thing goes for the side of DA. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what we're going to have here. I think the... Uh... Uh, are we going to go ahead and ban out the Roger or I'm expecting either a Roger or a Harris ban out here to to either complement with what they're going to be taking or the counter to one of those as well out here. Basic has actually been very good. He's uh, I want to say from the player. Oh. Love it. Love <laughs> it's, it. it's not every day. I mean, we've talked about this before. Um, I'm more of a fan of the Hanabi when there's an Angela on the team, just because I felt like that is a combination that is just nigh unkillable with the heart scarred combination shield plus the, the flask of the Oasis. I'm not a huge fan of her without that, just because, I mean, I, I feel like that just, that puts her up on a level that makes her more viable in that lane. But we did see last week, uh, DA did have a lot of success with the Hanabi Sans, the Angela out there so i mean a, a good call out by them but like i, I feel like we're kind of ignoring the, the bigger problems uh for the whole of the meta which is that that roger pick that could possibly be coming out here now i'm gonna go on with my praying strategy once again things like masha and natan should be coming out quite early in the draft especially since things like the akai the export even possibly the valentina doesn't get banned out too often the side of da often to ban out a lot of the sustain and the utility heroes that mobile zane loves to have but you know to be able to oh okay never mind i'm gonna take it back there's probably no masha coming in uh, okay maybe da is gonna go with the masha all right masha and natan for da then <laughs> uh, let's let's do that private uh, i've given up i'm uh, <laughs> I'm disappointed. I, I'm a little, I don't like this. I, I was a little confused with the the Florin ban out there. I feel like that uh, that's a, a very tiny blip in a very large pool that Cold World has shown us uh, thus uh. far for BTK. Um, our lot I being picked up. Seconds. I mean, that's a pretty dominant. Wait. Um, so that's going to be in our lot Rome, Rome I presume. Yep. Uh, for them, for DA, and then we're just waiting for that uh, marksman pickup by them. Mm. Do we go with the Roger to be countered by the Harith? No, we're gonna go Heck with the Ixia. Yeah, yeah it get, gets picked up here now, just to shine a little bit of light on this foreign pick. Um, the bloom that comes from it is a global ultimate that does not get affected by any anti heal right so things like boxia that is widely popular especially in the asia uh, server florin could potentially be a great pick right uh you know to go up against things like the matilda and angela is definitely a possibility there so i do see where da is looking for but i don't know if btk strategy is to actually go for something like an ube strategy right uh, cold world very very high mechanical hero uh player he he can do pretty much everything when it comes down to set utilities <laughs> picks off things like the the kaja could also be available here i think he has a very wide hero pool that he can choose the opting to go for the grok the wild charge definitely works great uh, especially to deal with a lot of the cc and the, the the no dashes coming out from melon so you know btk with a pretty strong draft da of course a strong draft themselves too but we will have to see how these two teams face up in the very first match of the series yeah, my, uh, I guess I'm kind of wondering, I mean, we've got the backline dive from BTK, so mm. you're going to have to be very careful if you're Melon. We've seen him, he's been an absolute star for Devious Activity. He's been uh, pretty much, I want to say, the MVP for like the last uh, three weeks uh, of them. Mm. He's absolutely shined. But here we've got some backline dive. We've got Xborg with his last insanity. Moba Zane's going to be able to just 
bowl right through the entire team if he wants to get him get to him and then you've got the wild charge from cold world a lot of tools for btk to be able to shut down melon before he becomes that menace that we've seen here in a lot of their games but ladies and gentlemen this is what you've come here for btk taking on devious activity in our last series of the night the first game of this series yeah two teams very very proficient on we typically call the strategy the front to back type of strategy right where you have the mages and the marksmen in the back side and you got the front line the heavy fronts in the front uh you know fronts in the front devious activities they got the barats <laughs> the arlot and the cc to be able to negate a lot of the damages out in the front and even try to get onto their backside if possible and the same thing with btk right the akai the grok those are strong frontline heroes even the export it's going to be quite hard for both teams to kind of penetrate each other. Now, let's take a look at some of the emblems. Two common emblems on both of the roamers, Joy Baj, with uh, the Quantum Charge, along with the Quantum Charge coming out from Grok. So lots of utilities quite early on some trades and auto attacks here and there for some mobility. But in terms of the emblems, besides the Quantum Charge on the Arlot and the Grok, relatively standard across the board here. I feel like this is going to be like this composition from BTK combined with the emblems is like it's all about penetration, like just rushing through the enemy, getting to that back line, shutting down those squishies very quickly and being able to close the distance, especially on heroes like Yato, who likes to really stay very far, poke out with a lot of those little sniping abilities. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Devious Activity is going to be able to set up correctly, maybe delegate some of these fights uh or or if it's going to be like btk just like they get the uh, they get the momentum they are able to charge they close it down and then able to secure some of these objectives well you know quite honestly i think both of these teams are quite happy with how their draft is uh going on right uh, the both front to back they have uh you know abilities to stop each other when it when it's necessary right cc can dive onto the backside same thing with the arlot uh, versus for the side of BTK, they don't have too much of necessary dives. They do have the quantum charge, but before that, yeah, a nice, a nice, well placed little snipe there is able to take down, uh, almost take down the Faraga armor from Yellow on the back. Big wild charge followed by a last insanity. Beautiful wombo combo there from uh, Bloodthirsty Kings, but Kush on the back end able to secure the turtle. Yeah, no, it's definitely a good pickoff for the side of BTK. They were able to uh, displace T and get the last insanity off of them, but the side of DA do pick up the objective. So it's going to be quite even across the board. Now, if we take a look at some of the late game scaling potential, I do think Exia and Rithel matches up quite well, even though both of them are significantly different in the gold lane, right? Aristal definitely have a lot more mobility in terms of the late game, building up some of the crits um into like has claws berserkers versus exia is gonna go for a much different route right uh something like the corrosion into dhs um so very different uh late game potentials from both these marksmen but they both scale up uh quite well now in terms of the jungle right akai and barats uh, typically, Brat has kind of a small advantage in terms of getting that retribution off, especially with the first skill, just a little bit more damage than Akai's burst. But he does have the uh, the the heavy spin to be able to push enemies out, and also Brat has ability to deal with that. Right, the Daytona's welcoming to uh, get some of the immunes off, and if before that, it seems like they're gonna go for it. Oh, Mobazang going to have to use that heavy spin to get himself out of harm's way. They're almost able to close the distance on there. You're talking about late game, and I almost want to say I want to point out something very specific about the kit of Akai, mm. especially when it comes to a lot of these Lord dances. Akai, every single time he uses an ability, he's going to get himself a little bit of shield, shield on him, which helps him when it comes to a lot of these Lord dances because he doesn't actually take damage. He's able to juggle a lot of those shields around to make sure he's not, whereas if Kush tries to juggle around uh, a lot of these lord fights eventually the lord is going to be able to tick him down which i've mm -hmm. seen in a lot of these late game fights for btk that uh moba Zane gets really comfortable on that akai and, and they're able to kind of just withstand those uh that that waiting period at these uh, objective fights hmm seems like milo is going to be coming up cc shortly followed here 
Ooh, yeah, Christian a little bit of trouble down down to about 50%. Last in comes the last insanity Miello able to find the Ooh. kill onto Kush. Yato oh finds the turtle. Now the full barrage is out. Melon finds the kill onto Moba Zane Cobra. Very Lloyd Joy Vaj gets picked off next. T with a dash is gonna be able to create some distance. But we are now sitting at a one to three for the bloodthirsty kings. But the another objective goes over to devious activity. Yeah, they were able to pick up that objective. They almost had, you know, quite a strong winning fight, but just a little bit of an overextension after the kill. They did kind of get traded there. The scoreboard is three to one, but the gold is still uh, quite close uh, for both of these teams. Now, one thing from the side of DA they do have is this range, right? Uh, BTK has a very front to back heavy focus type of comp. They don't have assassins that can get onto the backside or high mobility heroes like CC or Benedetta to be able to get onto the backside of Yato. So if they are unable to shut down Yato, it it might smell a little bit of a trouble. But on the other hand, Devious Activities, they don't have too much peel, right? Our lot has a little bit of the CC. Uh, you know, Brats can stand in front of the, the people, but Exia doesn't have a lot of people like, let's say, a Terizla to, to stop people in their tracks. And I think that's DA's uh, weakness, right? If, you know, a few of the front lines do get softened up or the position is not correct, you know, a wild charge can end their lives or heavy spin from the backside paired up with the Rithal. It could smell a lot of trouble. So DA, even with a comp that, you know, the Navarro is going to be quite safe in the backside, especially compared to what BTK have in terms of their skills, it's it's still going to be quite the hard team fight. It's not convincing enough for me to say that, hey, Devious is going to be able to take this because Yato is not going to die at all. Yato is probably not going to die, but it's still going to be a hard match for Devious to uh, get a convincing win here. Man, I feel like it's going to come down to the, who is the initiator for a lot of these fights. Are you going to be able to start mm. off with that final slash, which is going to allow Ixia to kind of put on the damage there? Oh, but we do have uh, Kush is going to go ahead and start on this turtle on the back end. T and Mobazane fighting. Miello trying to put on the damage on the Kush. You do have the last insanity followed by a wild charge. The combination able to take down Kush. Another well-placed combination from BTK. That's going to go ahead and reset the turtle, but DA not through just yet. T doing a good job. He's zoning out Mobazane. <laughs> So they don't even actually have a retry for this turtle right now. Speaking of which, Joy Baj on the mid right now. Nicolette actually burst him down. Mobazane finds a kill onto T. That is two down for Devious Activity. They're going to go ahead and back up. Bloodthirsty King's going to go ahead and pick up this next turtle. One to five in their favor. Yeah, it's so interesting that fight where you have the CC kind of zoning out the Akai for most of the fight, and then you also have the Exborg zoning out uh, Kush. But the difference is they were able to pick off Kush pretty much by himself, and the CC kind of falls shortly after. Now BTK takes the objective, no contestion, pushes their gold lead to a, a more significant margin this time around. It's about a 1k uh, lead so far. Along with that, tower is just going to be pushed a little bit more. 1.7 now is going to be the overall difference here btk definitely having a strong showing the front to back is working quite well even you know not able to get yato in a lot of these team fights it seems like the front line of you know da is unable to sustain against the high burst and damage that btk has and btk is just kind of able to win majority of the skirmishes so far in this game yeah, and I was about to say that there's, there's a, just a big difference when it comes to the CC, which is what Devious Activity is going to kind of need to be able to burst down somebody from the side Whoa. of BTK here. The, you got audience a huge prediction. front line. You've got, yeah, you can see here the audience predictions, 20% for Devious Activity. I feel like that's pretty generous for the amount of uh, BTK fans <laughs> that are in North America here. Uh, yeah. But like uh, when it comes to these objective fights, there's a lot of tools in the, the heavy spin, the wild charge. Uh, Mielo being able to zone people out with that uh, last insanity. A lot of tools here that can shut down Kush, that can stun Kush to, to mm. leave open an opportunity for Mobazane to get the retry while Kush is either being stunned or zoned out. And it's something that the uh, team of Devious Activity is going to need to counter if they want a chance here. As they go ahead, put some damage on the Mobazane, does activate the heavy spin, and he gets taken out by Kush. That's 20 seconds still left, but at the top lane, BTK finding themselves a trade. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that Zane typically gets caught off from time to time, but the side of BTK, they do get the punish onto the top side. They're able to pick up the marksman, which I think that's quite a win um, on their hand. 
it, it, it just feels like the side of devious they're just like the export impact is just so crazy right now 401 is his overall he pretty much has five out of the six kills on the board in his hands and the export is just so hard to deal with especially with the front lines that the side of devious has to offer right cc you know barat our lot those are heroes that gets shredded down by the export quite easily here and i think that paints a very very good picture on what happened in the early game right kush getting picked off and completely zoned away by milo and then potentially now milo is able to get a few kills here and there he has the immortality he is in the front side you also got the wild charge there impact play yeah, big wall comes out. Full barrage is out. The rest of the Blothers, the Kings are going to back up. Kush alone in the back lines of BTK gets bursted down. Cold World's going to have to find himself an escape back home, and the Lord is reset. Uh, they've, I want to say BTK. Uh, I, I don't know what they're doing for uh, like practice, but like a lot of these engagements just seem so smooth, so rehearsed. Mm. Wall up, immediate wild charge, immediate last and Insanity takes down Kush without, he doesn't even know what hit him. Yellow trying to zone out. Here comes another last Insanity, not able to find the target, but the Lord being ticked down. Basic does find a kill onto T. I believe this is going to be a free Lord for BTK. Yeah, and we haven't really mentioned Milo too much here. He is going to be leading in terms of the damage dealt chart, which is very, very significant for an XP lane, right? Export, typically you do build up a lot of the tanky items or acts into kind of the immortality that Milo has right now, probably paired up with the brute force. And he's dealing tons of damage so far, being so extremely annoying. BTK here setting up with Lord marching down on the top side, gets the last sanity off here. Yeah, he does not have any more. Oh, another Ooh. wild charge comes in at the cost of Cold World's life. Mobazan comes in, heavy spin onto Joy Boz, looking for a kill onto him. Melon is down. Oh my gosh, a, a lot of damage goes onto BTK, but the rest of DA, are they going to be able to capitalize on him? Yellow still has that immortality, but he is dangerously low. The rest of Devious Activity are going to have to back up as there is a Lord at their top gates. Yeah, another great team fight coming out from the side of BTK. The heavy spin paired up like with the damage that they had. It was just a little bit too much for the side of DA to handle. Now, there was moments of greatness where, you know, the brass was able to kind of get that knock back and two, three members came back and almost felt like DA was able to get that burst through. But the team fight still went into the favor of the side of BTK. The gold gap. 4.6k about a 1.5 on the gold laner once again you know erythal typically goes into kind of like that crit malefic roar uh berserkers has claws versus the exia is going for a lot of uh the attack speed uh we, we call it kind of the trinity build where they go for uh corrosion and dhs you know it's just different styles and marksmen i think both are great but it's just it just still feels like DA is lacking a little bit in terms of kind of the peel department. Yeah, we got a little bit of a replay here for that a big a push up there. We saw the wild charge. Cold World gets cost. But uh, Mobazane comes in there, does get a lot of damage on there. We're back to the main game here. Mielo putting on the damage. He's got, I want to say he's like 3K above most of the players here. <laughs> so able to kind of withstand. He's got a lot of his defensive items that you can see pretty much an example of there. They're not even able to bring him down. Yeah, I mean, 404. He's gotten pretty much every single kill possible you know most likely highest damage dealt player in the game so far you know valentina definitely you know playing more of a supporting act basic also farming kind of for the late game but milo definitely has you know shown himself uh you know put himself above the rest so far in this match definitely showing a strong performance here so far 5k gold lead da you know looking to see if they can get back into this game they have what it takes right novaria does able to have the ability to you know clear waves prolong the matches i think that's one of da's strength here is the novaria is still deathless Right, every single member has died, but the Navaria is, is, is being kept alive quite well. And I do think that is going to be the reason if the side of DA can get a little bit of reinforcement. But again, BTK playing a great game, especially on Milo. Side of DA really has to find a response against the export here.
Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not just the export that they're, they're, that is the problem. I want to say BTK mm. has been doing such a great job. When they're all here and they're not being zoned out, Cold World, it's wall, wild charge, into last mm. insanity, plus Nicolette's putting on the damage as well. Kush in a little bit of trouble oh, here. No. Is going to get popped up there and is getting bursted down. Miela with another kill under his belt there. That's going to be, I believe, a five <laughs> for him right now. Five, zero, and four. Now stealing the purple buff while Zane goes ahead and secures himself a lord this is this is a really really strong team coming out from btk right da especially with the new lineup coming in the performance against night horde was so crystal clear it felt extremely convincing but this time around btk definitely shown that da still has a lot of weaknesses that they have to kind of watch out for because 7k at 15 minutes is not significant but it's still extremely one-sided btk has all the outer towers available now they're getting a very good sync from both of the side lanes the lord is marching down so i would say this is pretty much the most perfect scenario that btk has but once again da they have the novaria should be able to get some clear going on but i do think the siege is going to be quite nasty to defend against yeah, attacking from all fronts right now. You can see another, one tower goes down at the mid. Big wild charge lands on the Kush. You can see Miello putting on the damage. Nicolette, the full barrage, finding a kill onto Nicolette. This might be over for, oh, Miello is, has his in the, <laughs> well into the back lines. Looks like he got left behind. And a unfortunate heavy spin onto T is going to allow Basic to find a kill. Yeah, now finally DA getting a little bit more traction in some of these team fights. Definitely a small mistake on PTK's end uh, to continue the siege even after the Lord is marched down. But look at DA's base. It's just wide open. There's some damage chipped onto the base tower. And the last outer tower is just, you know, one hit away from down. So definitely BTK. That was a well uh, versed push right there. Now DA on the attack onto the top side. Oh uh, yeah, now uh, really actually uh, uh, using this momentum that they just got for that defense to its fullest. Unfortunately, with so little health left on that tower, I feel like you have a very small amount. You have a small window if you're DA to make something happen before you have to start answering stuff at your base. Uh, possibly pushes coming, but I want to say they're, they're starting to come back here and they're uh, bringing down that gold lead to only 5k against uh, BTK right now. Yeah, I mean, the 5k lead, especially when we go on to this 17, 20 minute mark where the Lord is just much more bigger, it's the, the gold lead is not going to be, uh, you know, too big of an impact, right, for both of these teams. And especially with the late game marksman scaling that Melon is on, also the Rithel that Basic has, is, it's still quite an even match. But BTK, the front to back comp paired up with the CC from the wild charge and the heavy spin, it's a lot to handle for things like let's say a barat or even the arla right they get displaced pretty much all instantly and 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 it's extremely hard to deal with btk definitely having a strong showing here milo coming into the battle and members of da just completely disengage right they have to put the cc on the bot side they don't have an inhibitor tower they have to find a way to clear it's going to be a 4v5 on most of these objective it's just the lack of the early game the lack of the cc and the peel that da has they, they just don't have the perfect setup so far to be able to deal with the split push you know that bot side far wave uh wave that's just being pushed constantly and it's just so annoying to deal with yeah, and uh, the, ooh, Miello oh, actually cute. loses uh, all of his Faraga armor, so he's going to have to back yeah. off. Joybots into the back line, gets popped up. In comes Kush, looking for an opportunity. Immortality procced for Joybots. He goes down to basic. T alone in the back line of BTK. Full barrage is out, playing waste to the damage. You can see Moba Zane goes down, and that's going to mean no retribution for BTK. The rest of Devious Activity trying to trade up positions. Ooh. Another kill! Melon finds a kill onto Miello. Nicolette comes in from the side and Melon flickers in for another kill. That is a triple kill for Melon for that engagement. They also pick up the Lord.
Yeah, the second that the Rog Armor got picked off puts BTK kind of in a very really big disadvantage because you look, look at the damage dealt, right? 71k from the export. He was huge. And majority of these team fights now, Yato is going to be taking the lead in terms of the damage dealt. But the side of DA, especially when that export does not have the Raga Armor or Last of Sandy in, in available, Kush pretty much has a very, very happy time in trading a lot of these kills. Even Moba Zane, he held on to that heavy spin until the last moment where he did see an opening especially to go against t but it backfired right the daytona's welcoming was there to catch zane off guard they do get the pick off and the exia scaling five two three now with the dhs with the uh, with the corrosion he's hitting so extremely hard it's now backfired for btk that they don't have the gap closer they don't have the backline damage to be able to find Melon in any of these team fights. And if they keep it up right now, it seems like DA just has the power and the ability to just siege with the front to back comp that they have. And just like that, Devious Activity find four towers of bl Bloodthirsty Kings yes, here now looking for their fifth. We're going to go ahead and start moving on to the high grounds of the top. Pressure through the mid. Mielo struggling, looking for an opportunity. You're trying to see that front line right now. Mielo heading up the front. Cold World with the concealed play on the side. Here comes a, he a, a big wild charge and a flicker. Finds a connection on the Devious Activity. T in trouble. Full barrage is out, but they close the distance too quickly onto Melon. He's heavy spinned against the wall. Basic finding his kills alongside Mielo. And now they are chasing NT in an unfortunate oh. position here. Yato trying to support his escape, but it's not going to be long for T. And just like that, BTK turn this around. Yeah, but Joy Bodge is still on the backside here. So DA definitely still having a last chance, last bit of survivability. The mid is going to get pushed along with the bot side. Now, that is a very, very big minion wave. Death timers, 20 seconds on the board. Basic already doing some damage. I don't know if DA is going to be able to hold on to this here. Yeah, they're going to be able to try to, to they're going to need to try to take down these minions. Final Slash comes out onto Moba Zane, looking to try to take down these minions. But look at the rest of BTK nailing into this core. That's going to be game one going to BTK. Yeah, the nail in the coffin here. BTK able to get the victory in a 21 minute fashion game. The gold lead is still quite close, but the Bloodthirsty Kings were able to come out on top. And, you know, we talked about kind of the front to back strategy that they had. If Milo was able to get that last insanity off, especially since his Raga armor was not taken away, it seems like BTK were able to get the fights that they were looking for for that, for that win. So, you know, if BTK is just a little bit more patient, they should be able to take this quite convincing and you know they were able to do so just that now da with a different strategy coming through it was quite close we saw a little bit of momentum when they you know decided btk did fall a little bit under uh the base of da they were able to get a few towers get some push in but the overextension kind of cost them the game milo was able to kind of pull through once again the last insanity hit gets off plenty of damage the rest of the crew from btk just coming in and cleaning up the whole entire fight yeah, I want to say they lingered at that uh, base a little bit too long. I don't blame them, though. You have the opportunity. You have the leg up on BTK. Why not try to press that to your advantage? Unfortunately, getting caught and then BTK very quickly being able to turn that around. But the beginning of this game, too, as well, you can see they're yellow, 7, 2, and 5, and basic as well, 6, 0, and 3 here, really lighting it up and, and really being, uh, I want to say, the damage for them. The early game, I want to say, goes off to to uh, Nicolette, Cold World, and Yellow. You had Cold World laying down those uh, those walls, and then immediately, as soon as the wall came up, they didn't even have a chance to react because there was already yep. a wild charge coming for them. Nicolette coming on with the Frighten as well, and then before they knew it, before the Frighten wears off, you've already got a last insanity on its last tick and uh, doing the damage, and Kush was just getting obliterated early game. It felt like this composition, it was either the composition or the actual team felt like they just needed some more time than BTK was willing to give them to kind of find their footing, find that advantage. And unfortunately, it was just a little bit too late uh, against a team like BTK.
Yeah, and you know, a lot of the times, a lot of the damage dealers do outshine a lot of the utility focus, but I do think in this match, Milo and Cole will definitely shine the most uh, in this very first match, right? The wild charge impact plays. He was always there in the beginning. He did get some pickoffs here and there. And even some of the walls are quite annoying to deal with. And when we talk about Milo, right? The rotations coming in, getting the first peel off, getting the last insanity, getting that, all those picks that were so extremely important led BTK pretty much to the success of this match. Rich Guy is going to be going to basic the carry the highest damage dealt was Yato on the Novaria sandbag of course belongs to Mr. Moba Zane himself and the forgotten one taken by the support cast Nicolette a very support oriented way uh mage definitely well deserved here private well yeah and then also uh doing her job she was there for the damage and to get that little frightened cc on there uh and then to just give up those kills for uh let them stack on to miello who was just doing such a, a great job so hats off there is to, to kind of have that restraint uh especially because uh i want to say that the uh uh she can especially on that hero do a decent amount of damage but i want to say just just doing what she's supposed to uh as a utility there and the the uh the other uh, place of damage there da mm. i want to say the draft not uh not it didn't feel like it melded well together there really wasn't mm. a lot of protection for ixia you really had to rely on a mistake from btk where they all suddenly decided that they needed to back up and they were on the retreat and that's the main point where they were able to find solutions with the ixia she was able to catch them leaving or, or had them like kind of on the back foot but like we saw from that last that very last engagement there was really nothing protecting the ixia uh when that full barrage went out and uh, we saw them able to close the distance very quickly on her and and you know it's hard to peel exia off especially when you go against so many people that immune a lot of the cc's right grok first skill immune Exborg, uh, Last Insanity, Immune, right? Uh, heavy Spin, really hard to deal with. Disperses a lot, also has a small immune opportunity with a lot of the CC. So it's just quite the hard comp that uh, DA drafted to be able to deal with what BTK has going over the head-to-head. -head. It is gonna be a Rome-to-Rome -Rome matchup. You know, the KDA definitely stands up much taller for Cole World. Damage taken also on his side. And, you know, even the kill participation just a little bit more in favor of Cold World. So definitely good job uh, for the side of BTK. I know he ended with a 0, 1, and 10. You know, very, very small deaths. Almost zero to no mistakes here uh, for Mr. Cold World. And was able to pretty much take the series. Now, the uh, uh, not, not the series, but the match. But Team 5 participation across the board. Very much well done for both of these teams, I would have to say. Right? High kill participation. Novaria, 100%. Milo, 80% stands out from the btk lineup and the damage dealt it's 95k if it wasn't for yato milo definitely should be holding it down and for the mvp candidate so far in this series very very high damage high mechanics in terms of his rotations his 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 way of using the last insanity and you could see how btk just heavily relies on milo to provide kind of the initiation paired up with cold world it's these two guys that are starting for the team fight moba zane waiting for the right moment to use that while uh, to use that heavy spin and you know with this lineup coming through btk definitely prevailed in the very first match yeah, and I want to say, especially in the early game, it just seemed like BTK's composition shined a little brighter. You just had that great, uh, I want to say that that great utility, CC, and damage in the early game, where it was the wall, wild charge, uh, and then the CC from the wild charge, and the frighten from Nicolette, and then, of course, the damage that came from that last insanity. Whereas on the other side, you didn't really have things that gelled that well together you were really banking on that late game damage on there i mean you the only real cc that you had on the side of devious activity was the uh the final slash r lot uh and it's then you enough. were just kind of yeah it's it's not enough and you were kind of hoping i mean you're just hoping that they what stick together they don't move uh because they're, they're definitely going to try to get out of it there was just so much cc on the side of uh, btk to really shine in that early game and we're gonna see if that kind of uh if uh, we adjust a few things here for devious activity that's just a, a, an outstanding draft uh for btk that's why that's why things like terizla has kind of 
shined a little bit of light in the recent uh, ages, right? Uh, things like Boxia is honestly quite good. Even with just a small stun, that's still better than kind of a no stun uh, situation coming out from the Brats. Now the Brats definitely has some kits that is, you know, peelable, right? Daytona is welcoming even the second skill with a little bit of knockback, with a little bit of displacement. But, you know, generally it's just not enough for Exia. And that's just, I think, that's just the weakness of that pick. That's the reason why we don't see it as often. It needs a great setup. It needs a very significant front line to stop a lot of the dive heavy focus metas, right? The, the Raja that goes onto the backside CC it's, and even the export that can just, you know, ignore a lot of the fronts. So, Definitely, you know, this time around, I think DA have a, um, a maybe a more interesting strategy. The Angela gets taken out. So, you know, potentially no Hanabi available this time around. And man, dude, these teams, very interesting with the mind games, kind of like what GG does. They, they, they take a hero and they win with it. And then next time around, they're like, you know, that we played quite well with that hero. We're not going to let you have it. The export gets taken out. I think that is a very good response considering how Milo pretty much impacted the whole entire game with it. Uh, yeah, which is interesting too, um, to, to take that out there. Uh, wondering what the plan in mind there, they're gonna have CCs taken out for devious activity. Uh, even Just what you talked about, they, they played it before, they're not gonna let uh, a BTK have it. I'm uh, assuming, Traditionally, Louis. we'd see the, I want to say Barats or the Akai here, <laughs> Barats uh, coming in for Moba Zane, uh, which means we, we're going to be leaving open, uh, I want to say the, the mage pick uh, and, a, and a strong XP lane, possibly it's for DA. It's, it's so interesting that North America really, really loves this Barats pick. And, you know, to, to not take it away, Barats is a very, very great hero. But um, we don't really see a lot of Barats being picked up so extremely early. I think things like the Boxia with a little bit of anti-heal might provide a little bit more. But DA looking for the Faramiss and the Arlot. Now this opens the Lu Yi to be available to deal with the Faramiss. If not the Lu Yi, right? Valentina, I am you, you know, cold, uh, you know, Nether Realm versus Nether Realm. That's a great matchup. You could also slide in the Odette. Um, that I kind of mentioned. It's it's, it's a great response <laughs> towards the Fairmist Swan Song. I I know Rem is out there shining. I know it's an Odette main out there. Um, Odette is very very good against Fairmist. I would like to see it happen. We don't get to see the Louis in action, but the Valentina does come out to play. Nicolette with a great Valentina game from the last one, so definitely something expected. Um, so PTK now with another pick available, chooses to go for the Harith. This sets up for, again, the Paquito, the Benedetta that Milo really likes, you know, allows the Harith to kind of be in the four versus for 14 fights and allow Milo to carry on the split push role. So, you know, the Harith can just kind of be annoying, be a nuisance in a lot of these team fights. Well, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. I think uh, if I'm on the side of the EA, I'm looking to maybe pick up Piquito or it might be taken out in this ban phase because that's a, the big pick, right? You're heavy on the magic damage on the BTK yep. side, so you're looking for some type of physical burst on his side. With only the X, uh, the XP laner and the roam pick left for them, there's there's very few options there. They're going to go ahead, uh, DA, feeling very comfortable with the, the Ixia picks, mm. pick again. I'm hoping that we have either some peel or a front line this time because because I really felt like we could not take off because there was just never, uh, well, there were very few opportune moments for Melon to really find a good position, be able to pull out that full barrage uh, without mm. the penalty of the BTK just like absolutely closing the distance and uh, crushing uh, him. So things that peel well comes into mind for me in terms of the XP, I like the Terizla. Right, I, I think the Terizla is quite underrated. It has come back into the shine. Um, so definitely something that DA should consider here. Things like the Kaja and the Franco, the suppressions, and especially with such a big hitbox that Barats has, Franco does quite shine here. And if he's able to get the Bloody Hunt either onto uh, the Barats or even the Herod, that's gonna be a free setup uh, for Melon to have. Now, yes, I did say that it's very hard to slot Exia in recent. With the lineup that BTK has, it's not, it's too dive heavy. It's still very front to back centric. So, you know, I, I think Exia with the Corrosion and DHS is going to hurt Mobazane on the Brats quite significantly here. And Joybosh here goes with the pick. I love it. 
I love it. The Kaja and the Fair Mist, it's a strong combination on the mid, possibly one of the strongest sustained and clear duos that we have in the mid lane. And this pairs up quite well in terms of the front to back strategy, the peels that we're looking for, great adjustments on the side of DA. Uh, but you do leave open. I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to see a Paquito on know. the side of uh, BTK potentially here. Kaja, uh, you're going to have you're going to have the divine judgment. You're going to be able to pull back. But uh, what what I'm wanting from a DA for that? Where's the burst? What's going to be able to burst down that person that you eventually pull? Ixia takes mm. some time to kind of come online. Yato can possibly close the distance there, uh, especially with uh, I believe his uh, his shadow stampede. He can close the distance in there. He can uh, hit them with his other ability depending on how many people are around he deals a lot of damage but uh, you're definitely going to need something and oh and oh that's a lot two of setting of the, potential on the two, side of btk two of the strongest sets get slotted in for the side of btk to kind of well round their draft with a lack of cc in the first three picks i think it's extremely smart side of da has a couple of choices one to negate a lot of the cc with something like a martis they could also go for more of a utility style like the boxia right so i think those are two of the available they could also go for the akai right you know that's going to be triple cc with the akai the kaja and also the arlot so there's still options available i don't think fanny is going to get slotted here i know kush is a great fanny player <laughs> but quite honestly going against whole world ruby like we've seen it not do so well but then the nolan does come out to play it's interesting it, it, it's interesting it's a dynamic that we haven't really seen a lot of success a lot of the assassins i feel like don't really find a lot of success especially in the top tier pro games but nolan is an outlier in terms of that a very very high win rate especially in asia gets banned out quite a bit and just judging from the amount of magic that the side of da has with the fairness it's enough it's enough to warrant a very damage heavy uh jungler so you know da definitely having a different strategy this time around you know we'll see how it matches up against the bloodthirsting kings this time I'm, I'm not completely opposed to the uh, <laughs> normally against with the with the Nolan out there. I might be like, ah, there's a lot of CC on the side of BTK. But mm. this is an answer to what I was bringing up before. You have the divine judgment. Where's the burst to take him down? If you don't succeed with Nolan in the early game, you can kind of set him on the back. Wait for that divine judgment. He can come in with the fracture. Bing, bang, boom. You've got the damage you needed to actually really uh, find that synergy for this uh, devious activity composition. But ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be game two devious activity looking for some revenge against the BTK here in our second game of the series. Oh, let's go. Well, you know, let's talk about some of the jungle matchup. Nolan, pretty much one of the fastest jungle clears in the game so far. It's he's so efficient in the jungle. He should be able to get from buff to buff and even going up against a Barats, which does quite well in the jungle. Look at Kush. He's already moving on to his little green camp. Got both of the buffs and potentially looking to fight out for the Little Wanderers. Some early aggression from both teams. We know Kaja, Valentina, Fairmus, all aggressive quite early on, right? Ooh, and here's a little bit of that uh, that penalty you pay for having an assassin jungler. You see already BTK, mm. Coworld, encroaching. Oh, Yato taken very low. But BTK already starting to encroach on the jungle of devious activity, looking for an opportunity to find Kush alone to maybe be able to find the kill before he's actually able to take off. Take a look at some of these emblems. Yeah, a lot of aggressive emblems coming out from the side of DA. A lot of damage, just raw damage uh, from the very first talent. Of course, Wilderness Blessings across the board. Even the XP laner has it to be able to rotate from the far lane into some of the team fights, right? So very aggressive emblems coming out from the side of Devious. On the side of Bloodhounds, though, a little bit more sustained, right? A lot of uh, Brave Smites. Uh, on different characters across the board, even some mobility, but overall just very sustained, very tanky from the side of BTK. On the other hand, you know, it's it's interesting. We, we do have something that's different. Kush on a tank emblem, uh, Nolan, I'm, I'm not sure if I saw that correctly, but it was a tank emblem <laughs> I did see. So just a little bit more uh, sustain or uh, utility to deal with some of the frontline presence that BTK has. But, you know, a, a turtle uncontested for the side of BTK here. <laughs> 
I'm not sure if that was a mistake. I, um, oh, you can already see here, uh, BTK uncontested for that first turtle. Now pressing their advantage into the jungle of Devious Activity. Joy Boss in trouble. Out comes the Nether Realm. It's not enough as getting scooped oh. up is Joy Boss. That's going to be a first kill, uh, two kills now for Bloodthirsty Kings. Yeah, BTK definitely shining in a lot of the small skirmishes. is quite convincing. They're just able to walk into deep enemy territory. Get the team fight that they're looking for get the pickoffs it's about a 1k gold lead so you know btk I, I i feel like now they just love playing this kind of uh neutral game in the beginning they get their small advantages here and they're just small outplays small skirmishes that are, they're able to win oh this is kind of what i was afraid of with the nolan pick in the early game mm -hmm. there is just so much cc on the side of bloodthirsty kings that wherever nolan tries to creep in he's gonna have issues even trying to close the distance on a squishy on on anybody in the lanes he's gonna have problems even if he does close the distance he's gonna have trouble trying to get away from there so it, it's all i'm wondering if this if there's a more uh, another dimension to this plan for devious act Activity. Yeah, and it is a tank emblem, Nolan. It's not something that we've seen before. I mean, we've seen the support <laughs> emblem, Fredrin, coming out to play with kind of like the battle build with the with the brute force. This time, we do get to see a Nolan on a little tank build, so something quite interesting here. BTK, they do deny away the blue buff. The bully ball kind of continues with the brats, and you know what you're scared of, Private, is just coming into life here. <laughs> BTK is just dominating across the map. They're just denying waves and jungle creeps over and over and this time around bdk i don't know if the side of da has anything to stop the early rotations yeah and and just like that nolan uh, losing his purple buff hurts so much so because much. the biggest problem oh nice little divine judgment there catches on the cold world oh, followed no. up by a penalty zone two nether realms are out neither team able to find the advantage but all the while this is going on mobazane picking up the turtle as well uh what i was yeah. going to say is that when you have um Kush actually getting picked up here. Oh, Melon's going to be able to clear this out. Kush in a little bit of trouble. Cold World and Nicolette in tow. Melon uses that flicker to get himself to safety. But Kush without the purple buff, the thing that makes a Nolan so strong is his ability to spam his abilities so quickly. Uh, and you need a lot of mana for that. You need to be able to kind of uh, to get a lot of that back. Without the purple buff, yeah, he can spam his abilities, but he's useless for like <laughs> after that 30 seconds of... Uh, of spamming those and you know the impact of the kaja has not been as significant as the i'm offended coming out from ruby and i think that's something that da kind of has to try to find a way to uh, get around right joy Baj, the 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 uh the suppression that he has is quite hard to deal with but they're just unable to even pull punches mobile zane just sitting underneath the blue the purple buff no care in the world doesn't even mind that the kaja is there it's like hey man take the divine judgment give it to me there's nothing that's going to stop me and the side of devious is really showing here that there's no burst damage early on to be able to connect with the divine judgment right exia needs time to farm nolan definitely needs a lot of time to farm and fairness is not a significant burst mage it's more of a kind of like a, a long-term burst uh with some of the aoe but Divine judgment? Not divine yeah, judgment. Yeah, uh, we do have another one coming out there. But to add on to your point, even uh, even if you find a target, how are you going to get to that target when you've got Cold World uh, with so much CC? Mielo can punish yep. you with a penalty zone. There's just so much CC that even if you find the divine judgment, any type of closing the distance is going to be to the detriment of devious activity. Nicolette does get pulled in to that mid tower, still able to get away. Joy Bot oh. coming from the side. A very slow divine judgment. Nicolette able to find the flicker and a nether realm. I'm offended comes out finds a kill onto Kush full barrage does not help Unfortunately for devious activities bloodthirsty Kings gonna walk away with yet another kill Yeah, another divine judgment opportunity that did not convert into a kill three to zero is on the board But divine judgment is a skill that even when it go into the late game It still has the possibility of you know singling out a specific target and you know That's what da kind of has they have the r lot to displace they have the nether realm but before that 
Yeah, we do see that T. He's going to have to expend that flicker. Moba Zane and the rest of BTK basically have this purple buff on cooldown. They know the timing of it. Oh, oh. and Moba Zane able to get another purple buff for himself. T in trouble. Nether Realm is out. It is going to help them get an escape. Yellow looking for an opportunity. And two stuns for D. And oh. they get pushed back. Back into the mow of BTK and picked off by Nicolette and Miello. Man. Zane is eating good this match. 2-0-3, highest impact player. Able to get another one here. There's just not much that the side of Devious has. And, you know, it's honestly just due to the, the, the risk that they took of picking up this Nolan, right? Typically, when you go for the Assassins, you want a very hard frontline set tank. Something like an Edith or you know, a Minotaur where he's in the front side, in the bush, and his overall objective is to clear some of these bushes and get a very deep CC, a multiple CC stun. But this time around with something like a Kaja, Kaja typically is not very bush check viable, right? He's kind of an assassin hiding in the back, goes with the uh, Divine Judgment off the cooldown of the Flicker, gets a guaranteed pick off and rinse and repeat. But the side of DA, especially in the early game, they're unable to find any openings to get that guaranteed pick off. And that's kind of the reason why Devious is struggling. They don't have any, you know, way to, to uh, uh, counter a lot of these fights, to punish a lot of the mistakes that BTK might have, especially when they do choose for the commit and you know you said it quite well early on cold world too much cc to deal with even with the trisla Oh, two nether realms are out. Final slash has been used. He in a little bit of trouble, and we're looking for more damage. He actually able to find himself and escape, and both teams walk away uh, without taking a death. So, I mean, I, I guess looking up for a devious <laughs> activity in there that they didn't uh, lose anybody, but it's already going to go ahead and set up for BTK, who's already going to start focusing on this next Lord. And even with the split push strategy that DA has, Nolan definitely can do quite good in terms of the split push, but that just gives away a lot of the neutral objective that DA has already lost early on, right? There was not much contesting in terms of some of the turtles coming up. And even with this lore, there's just almost absolutely no contestion. DA, they are struggling in terms of finding the pickoffs that they're looking for. Maybe this conceal might make a difference, but I think BTK already <laughs> spotted it here. Yeah, and unfortunately for DA, uh, not able to find anything with that conceal. Some good placement from Nicolette and Cold World. Uh, very patient with it they're right now. They're going to have some minions of, and the Lord crashing down at the bottom. So they're looking for an opportunity here. DA knows what's up. It's going to be three V5 conceal oh. play of their own. Full barrage, but Melon does not see them on the back line. Two down, three down for Devious Activity. BTK roll right through them in this box bottom lane you know private maybe next week we might get <laughs> uh you know some 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 closer series because because it's hard right btk completely dominating in, in, in the first two matches here but fight yeah, and that's going to be it for Kush and Yato and the core. BTK wrapping up. Oh, the quickest match of the night, beating Gaming Gladiators with a 10 minute and 36 second match here against Devious Activity. 11 to 0, Private. A clean sweep from the Bloodthirsty Kings here. The all-star lineup of DA is unable to get even just a kill, a punish off of the Bloodthirsty Kings here. 11, 0, and 34 is the overall KDA. BTK played a great game. And when we take a look at their draft, it was so smart, right? They had three members that were slotted in early on the Barats, uh, the Harith, no CC available there, even with the Valentina but they added on the Ruby and the Terizla and just made their comp so extremely tough to deal with. The front line had the ability to, you know, peel off anything that they're looking for, even go for some conceal engagement. And the, the bet that Devious Activity had, right? Uh, when you pair the Assassin up with the Kaja, typically it's just not where we want to be. The Assassin is very, very strong, especially when you pair it with the Grok with uh, uh, an Edith or even a Minotaur, a Tigreal, those frontline sets. But the Kaja, you know, it just didn't really find the pickoffs that they were looking for. The two, three Divine Judgments that he did try to put out just ended up 
failing. You can see a lot of zeros across the board for the side of Devious Activities. It's not the game that they were looking for. The risk didn't play it off, but honestly, it was a well draft done by the side of BTK. It almost had no weaknesses against the composition that the side of DA uh, well put. And even with the early game aggressiveness with the Barats, with denying some of the purple buffs, going into the red side to, you know, create havoc, BTK definitely shined quite well in this in, in this match. Yeah, and you can see here, uh, a, a typical for BTK, basic with the gold per minute. Uh, Zane actually coming in uh, with uh, the uh, almost uh, 30,000 damage there, and Cold World with the assists. I want to say the, the biggest difference for me uh, in the game in Gla Gladiators matchup and this one for BTK is, I want to say, BTK's drafts against Devious Activity. Devious Activity, I mean, it, it just from the beginning, from the draft, I'm you already Bold. see some of the holes in it. They're lacking a lot of CC yep. early game, a lot of synergy with some of these picks. And BTK, it's it's all about those three things. And they execute it <laughs> so quickly, and they're getting yeah. even faster at executing it here. That was a 10-minute game there. You can see here the head-to-head -head for Miello and Devious Activity here. 2-0 and 7 for Miello has been having, a, I want to say, a great night so far. Uh, Devious Activity, I want to say, like, right now, it starts with the the draft and then it comes up to uh to, to uh I, I, well honestly i don't even know where to go from there we need to just first <laughs> work on the draft we need some more cc we need some more early game uh we need some answers but right now i want to say btk is on top of it yeah this the suit and tie is working well for the btk the playoffs right they're they're these these teams have all had a lot of times to prepare Gaming Gladiators definitely shine in terms of some of that preparation. And BTK right here is still proving to us that they are one of the two of North America. They stand above the rest and they're continuing to prove that point. It's It was a tough game for the side of Devious Activities, something that they could definitely bounce back from. It's just that they have to, just like you're saying, build a little bit more early game, try to find a little bit more CC, a little bit more front lines, deal with their comp, or go for something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, right? Last game, I felt like the Louis Arlock could easily be slotted in early, right? The Masha that has not been picked up, the Natan that is also available, but people are sticking to this Exia pick, which, you know, quite honestly, when it comes down to some of the world stages, it's just not going to happen just like that, right? It's it's a very, very hard pick to set up. You need a lot of front lines like the Charisla, the Edith, uh, the Minnow in the front to be able to stop even a Fredrin to be able to stop people in their tracks. And the setup is just not not a perfect scenario for the Exia to be able to be picked in like let's say the first or the second phase the draft like it's way too early it's it's not something that I like I think things like the carry and the Kaja could have paired well especially dealing with something like the Barats those are things that are available but you know DA is not opting to go for those picks and I think it's just biting them in the butt at this point yeah, I, I, I was uh, I was about to comment on that too. I feel like for some reason right now in North America, we've super hyper fixated on Ixia as like uh -uh. The, the end all be all right now. She's got some glaring holes in her kit, uh, which is just the fact that she's basically a sitting duck. You could put a flicker on her, but if you don't have something that, that's able to peel for her, that <coughs> excuse me, I'm so upset by this, uh, I, but, but something that's able to create that wall for her, uh, she's basically a sitting duck and there's just so many better picks and I, I, I was actually kind of looking to see if maybe Ixia came up in like uh, MPLPH or nope. something very uh, very suddenly no it's just here that that we have this we feel like she can just be this uh, this huge game changer I know there's been some players that that have had relative success Melon being one of those but against a team like uh, BTK you need to be able to protect your marksman and uh, putting putting them on Ixia, you're basically setting a lot of dials against him. So, I mean, you can take a look here at the damage taken. I mean, uh, it's pretty much a, seen... a lot of it going over to like zero percent. There's yeah. just no, there were no kills there for devious activity right what's, now. And they need to figure something out here quickly. Is 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 like, when have we seen a Faramus getting the sand back, my friend? Like, what? <laughs> like, what, where are we in terms of the meta that the fair miss is the one that's getting hit hard? So there's definitely some logistic problem 
inside of Devious that they have to kind of fix in order for them to get back into this series. And if not this series, there's definitely uh, a lot of matches that they have to play through in kind of the lower bracket, right? And, you know, they have a little bit more leeway to be able to, you know, figure things out. Again, this DA is quite a new uh, lineup that we haven't seen in the regular season. I know they talked about how consistent and this is the lineup that they really want to put, but standing up tall again, North America, they're not able to get the performance that they were looking for. And this is pretty much the Dark Knight team that we all vetted in the beginning. Hey, they're gonna be a contender. They're gonna give BTK a very hard time. And so far, we're not exactly getting to see that. Yes, the individual players are good. The playmaking ability of each one is things that we cannot take away. But in terms of the five-man synergy, BTK is just dominating and just vibrating all like anything in its path. They're just completely destroying it. And it's just not MOBA Zane's game anymore. Milo popped off. Cold World, 100% KP popped off there. Moba Zane, of course, still holding up strong with that leadership, 100% KP. I don't think this game is going to be any different. Yeah, I, that's been one of the, the biggest uh, talking points for me when it comes to BTK and their growth throughout the season, it, or uh, even throughout seasons, plural, is that uh, the the synergy he kind of lacked last season with his team put everything on his shoulders. If you if you want to beat BTK, attack Moba Zane, ban out Moba Zane, bing, bang, boom, it's done. <laughs> he, he was going to be the strongest yep. part. That is no longer an option here because you've got the rest of BTK. BTK here have uh, performed. Even if you give, I've talked about it before. Uh, I think it was off screen I talked about it, but if even if you give him an Akai or if you give him one of the, the last picks in his jungle arsenal, the drafting has been so good that the rest of the composition will support that pick in a way that it still becomes a, a problem for you. And right now, Devious Activity having problems even trying to get that early game, finding out the those little things to make some of of these they have strong picks in mind but they're not setting the stage to make those picks successful the ixia the lack of cc the lack of the early game uh in that first game that they had uh and that's just where btk is starting to shine here we can see some of the normal picks here focusing on the support roles there matilda and angela going to be banned out for btk xborg uh and the farama is going to be taken off for devious activity and i do want to give a shout out to uh midnight i think it's a ph caster um, you know, they, he, he's been helping out BTK with a lot of the drafts and definitely very, very impactful, right? Even just the last two picks that he just pretty much secured and well-rounded the draft BTK, the lack of CC provided with two of the, 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 the biggest frontline sets, right? Like those are extremely hard heroes to deal with, a Terizla and a Ruby. Like you're not getting behind those heroes you're not getting onto the backside you have to face those two things in front and you know midnight is able to kind of build a draft around what btk is so good at and you know they're shining right now it's very convincing that the draft fits with their style the coaching is helping out and all the members it's not a you know mobile zane show no more you know we got players like cole world nicolette milo so much impact and also basic right he's not even getting his moment to shine anymore on you know in the gold lane just just because the games are just closing out so early he's getting you know some good kda he's getting some pushes here and there but milo is just you know so in front you also see you know cold world always in the front of engaging btk is just such a strong team right now I, i've talked with milo and gotten uh, i want to say I, I i don't know how to say but like his his mentality uh, maybe the way he style? approaches the xp lane yeah his style for this and uh, he's always kind of seen it as the xp laner uh their primary role especially in the early game they set the tempo for a lot of objectives it's on mm. the xp laner and he takes that whole pressure on when it used to be the Terizla pick he would kind of come in with that penalty zone we've been seeing it as he front lines with the x borg as well but he he his his style there is to kind of be the front line he is the one that kind of carries the the btk through a lot of these objectives especially in the early to mid game where the objectives the are the big thing as it starts getting more into the late game uh that's when the rest of the team that's when you have your marksmen starting to get fed up there that's when you have your mage 
starting to get more and more damage. Uh, but he's been executing here to perfection here. We talked about him, uh, especially in the first two games here. I do like this pick, devious activity, some CC, <laughs> some tankiness, a front line. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, but the opening from BTK is it's so convincing already it is still a little bit kind of like that old school style that we've seen valentina fredrin right you know it, it gets a little bit old but it is still just one of the strongest retries in the jungle you also have the valentino the imu to take the Minone's fury so you know it's, it's definitely a well-rounded draft here da with a pretty good response too right the the cc that they were lacking now they're able to get it but they're picking up a utility style jungle instead of kind of like the assassins that they looked for the last game so it, it, it's it's a little bit countering what the style that they're looking for but definitely a lot of front line and a crazy response from the side of btk Barats, minotaur that's fine man i'm gonna take a carry with the purify and i'm gonna be able to hit through all the front lines and novaria it's gonna be hard to be able to you know get the snipes off a of carry especially with so much dashes that he has it's gonna be quite hard but i i definitely feel like the novaria fits with yato style he's been playing quite well on this hero throughout the regular season if even in the last match you know i, I think he maybe died or not the last match but the very first game he maybe died once or twice at most didn't take too much damage so this definitely does prolong the game a little bit but btk's draft here so far is just very counter towards uh the front line heavy that devious has even with the cc that they provided the carry is just so extremely smart here private I was going to get a little worried for Devious Activity because they hadn't picked the Marksman. I was like, man, if all answers point to Ixia again, I'm going to be very upset. But BTK, they're like, you know what? Show us something different. We'll help you out. You don't want the Ixia here. Uh, they're going to go ahead and take out the Roger pick as well. Something interesting from Devious Activity. They're going to uh, take out the Uranus pick here. Uh, possibly Milo. looking for... Uh, well, you don't have the CC out there anymore. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, Mielo did play a, a decent Uranus in the in the past Regular. as well i'm actually it's it's gonna be interesting i, I we'll see what we got uh, so far a promising draft from devious activity uh we're still gonna be uh, waiting for uh we still need that physical damage from them um uh, we're still looking for um i guess that xp lane as well we have a backline dive uh black dragon out there for the side of btk and the hanabi hmm but <laughs> but here we go so the hanabi is very very good to deal with a lot of initial cc things like uh you know atlas or uh akai or uh even the tigreal but one thing that she is not good at that btk could bring into the table is the kaja kaja paired up with the carry perfect combination kaja with the valentina very very solid uh early game that you know does you know go into what btk likes to stand for and kaja not bush checking you have the fredrin in the front right so a very very strong uh, potential for side btk if they opt to pick that up we love the terizla pick here terizla and minotaur very very hard to deal with and now with the hanabi that btk has struggled in the past to deal with it does shine a little bit of hope for the side of da to be able to go through but going against a new song where it's dive heavy in the back uh, it's, it's it's some trouble here private for me it's not convincing enough <laughs> for a hanabi to be warranted here where is the where is the natans where is the clods right like where are we going with this meta uh in answer to to what you were saying they go ahead and pick up the kaja it's the immediate answer for the hanabi yep. and i will say btk they struggled against the hanabi but i want to add an asterisk to that point is they struggled against the hanabi with an with angela, angela on the team so you had a heart guard uh if you know about hanabi uh hanabi when she has a shield she's cc immune uh and then plus you just have a shield on her so she's going to be able to run amok you combine that with angela who has a heart guard angela who has a flask of the oasis that's even more shield that she gets and then hanabi who has uh the agus as well you don't have a lot of those other 
options here with this Hanabi pick. You have a lot of CC. You've got a lot of tanking and front line. But what I feel like Hanabi lacks that other marksmen sometimes shine in is a lot of the damage uh, that they can bring in. I'll, I'll, uh, that Hanabi, you're really expecting her to be able to do a lot of damage for a long time because you're, you're expecting that shield to last you. Where other marksmen, they do just a lot more damage uh, in that tam that time span. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to say devious activity fighting for their chances in the upper bracket here. This is game point for the Bloodthirsty Kings. Is is BTK playing like a 4D chess here? Because you know the Kaj and the carry perfect synergy, right? The Hanavi. You know, the side of DA, a lot of the drafts that they do, especially going up against BTK, it's just a little bit awkward, right? Uh, common emblems for both the carry and the Kaja. Uh, tank for the Fredrin, quite standard here for uh, both of these teams. Uh, you know, not, not much out of the ordinary, quite standard. And, you know, once again, I, I feel like BTK's draft is quite good, but a uh, early pick. Ooh. Yeah, like you did that. see there. Cold World almost got caught there. A very nice little snipe coming in from Yato. Brought him down, but unfortunately, Devious Activity just not quick enough uh, that time to be able to close the distance and find the kill. Yeah, some some early aggression with the Novaria and the the, the Trevisla. I, I I think that's good news for the side of DA, right? Like if they're able to get some some pickoffs early, some flickers traded here and there, it, it definitely shines a, a little bit of moment of greatness. And I think that's what Devious needs, right? A little bit better of an early game advantage sets them up a long way for the late game team fights and heroes like the Hanabi definitely feels like it is required for you to go into that late game and when you take a look at the the Rome matchups right the Minotaur and the Kaja Minotaur traditionally is supposed to counter the Kaja so I would say DA actually stands out ahead in terms of this matchup it just depends on how they can execute this match and immediately after dropping T very low, Black Dragon comes out. Kush finds himself Ooh. a retribution. Moba Zane gets taken out. Joybot's picking up the kill there. Cold World looking for oh. an escape on the side. Melon cuts off their escape, looking for a kill onto Nicolette. And Joybot finds it for devious activity and unanswered two deaths there for DA and nothing that BTK can do in reply. Yeah, here we go, Private. This is what we're talking about, right? Some fight, some flair coming out from the side of DA, and their comp matches so well with what they are drafting up against, right? A little bit of a gold lead for their jungler, for their XP. Pretty much everyone overall has a little bit of close to like a 500 gold lead, right? The, the mage, the XP, and the jungler. So some good news, good trades for the side of DA. It definitely feels like in terms of their team fight, it's a little bit more convincing this time around, a little bit more a well rounded and they even got the hanabi to come in for some action right so devious activity already with a much better start this time around yeah even even though t actually got bursted really low which allowed Mielo to come in with the black dragon which meant that devious yeah. activity was a player down for that engagement and still able to find success with it that just speaks a lot about the the momentum kind of going into this game if they can kind of hold on to it keep their rotations tight make sure that when these objectives come oh, look at that another <laughs> another little uh astral sphere there from yato is going to find a mark onto two members of btk and you know, this time around, oh, before that. Yeah, D Divine Judgment comes on. Joy Boz gets a hammer down, getting hit with his own Minoan Fury and then followed up with an Appraiser's Wrath. We find another kill off a screen uh, for BTK. Yato getting dove under the tower. He is going to be able to find a flicker, gets away. Moba Zane uh, down to half health, but he's going to be able to chunk some gold off of this mid tower. Yeah, even with... Devious Activity able to get three kills quite early on. Milo was able to pick up one kill for himself, and they do get a pick off onto the mid side, but they did waste a lot of the resources, right? No utilities available. Cold World does not have Divine Judgment, so most likely, even with the Minoan's Fury being set up by Joy Botch, this should pretty much go uncontested for the side of DA, and it does. Now, the side of BTK, what's interesting here is that Milo is on this Yuzong, and Milo has to choose greatly here right do does he zone out the navaria go for a full send there 
or does he target Mellon, which is going to be a little bit more closer to the front line, but he has to get through things like the Joy Baj, like the Tarizla. So it's going to be a hard decision for Milo to make, and I think that's what's going to make the difference here. If he's able to choose correctly and get the pickoffs that he's looking for, on the other hand, I think DA, they're relatively playing kind of a reactive game, right? They they want BTK to kind of full send forward, get, you know, Cole World to flicker into a play that's disadvantaged towards him, have the counter set from Joy Baj, and then the rest of the members kind of follow up. So DA, honestly, they have what it takes to be able to push through in this game. But a lot of the history has shown that DA, you know, they're just unable to kind of get a winning team fight early so far. They're able to do it in this game so far but is it going to last long i think that's the real question that da has to figure out here <laughs> Nicolette very carefully in that pixel bush when you bring up the items but I wanted to touch on something you were saying I think the obvious answer is that the black dragon goes to zone out Yato you have an mm. answer in cold world to possibly take down melon uh, on the other side so if you use it because if you use the black dragon to go for melon you're not only are you competing with uh, the front line but you're also competing with melon who's got an Aegis who's going to have shield who's who might not be trapped down with that petrify and able to get away so now you've wasted that ability and you still have yato bringing down suppressive fire from a well outside uh outside your reach and you know what's crazy is that nicolette being the support player that she always kind of talks about the support mage style she builds up anti-heal first item on a mage and typically when you go anti-heal first item it's a five percent cooldown reduction you do get the anti-heal a little bit of health a little bit of damage but it's not significant it doesn't give like 20 percent like a book does it doesn't give you know the extra burst damage that they're looking for but daytona is welcoming yeah, Detna's welcome cuts is on the yellow. Kush still able to find himself a retribution, but is going to be taken down by Mielo. In comes Joy Baj. Minoan Fury does not meet its mark, and they are latched on to Mielo. They answer back a death with another death, a kill of their own. Mobile uh, Zane comes in with a uh, with a bonk of his own, not able to find anything there, but still Yato finding some of these little snipes. I want to say that that play coming out ahead still for devious activity right now. Yeah, one for one trade. The Lord of uh, the Turtle does go to the, in favor of the side of Devious. They are still holding on to their lead barely, but it seems like BDK is content with just trading a one for one, right? They know the carry can scale well in the late game. And even look at this trade, right? Basic was, you know, not doing so extremely well in terms of the laning phase. In terms of both of their hit range, uh, I think Hanabi either slightly more or just around the same. But with the ability of the cleave, she's going to do a little bit better in terms of uh some of the laning phases so definitely melon having a little bit better in terms of that lane is doing quite well they do end up putting a trade and i still think btk is quite content with just going even in the early in the mid game and just going to rely on some of the divine judgment flicker off cooldown to be able to Ooh. deal with uh some of the damage but Daytona's. Yeah, they do kind of catch out Cold World and Nicolette on the backside. Mielo looking oh, for an Milo. opportunity for the flank sandwich in between two BTK members. Big pop up lands on the Kush. Out comes the Black Dragon. Mielo looking and uh, flying through the air does not find uh, an opportunity there, but uh, I want to say devious activity. The difference right now is that they're just a little slower than when BTK, like the last few games, when they had this advantage, they were really pressing into a lot of these objectives. We can see here in that last fight there kush did get dragged out they were able to trade a kill for a kill they find him yellow here but ultimately that turtle goes over to the side of devious activity and i do want to mention the last black dragon like you know it's a little bit out of position they're looking for fights 20 seconds before the lord even spawns now both sides don't have utilities available like you know, we, we I feel like we got to be just a little bit more disciplined. Another ultimate wasted on the side of Kush. It's like we have to find fights that are just much more favorable in our position or guaranteed, right? Like this Lord objective, if the side of BTK chooses to come in, they can find a fight that's potentially in their favor. And it does look like they're looking for it. Yeah, they're going to be able to possibly get this. Mobazane gets the Lord. And from the side, Basic coming in with a speedy light wheel, laying on the damage. Down goes Melon, now setting his sights onto Joy Bods, laying in more auto attacks. He's not able to find it, but he is going to be able to find a kill on Tati. 
Another 3 for 0 advantage for the side of BTK as they sweep through this mid game. It's only 10 minutes in, but now BTK already with a substantial uh, uh, gold lead in their favor. And you talked about it, right? The gold lead that BTK had in the first two games, they just stepped the, 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 the pedal on the gas and they never let go. But DA unable to convert any of their gold lead into a significant advantage, even in the towers. And now BTK has the lead. They have the Kaja, they have the carry, it scales quite well into the late game. The synergy is there. Paired up with the IMU, the peel is significant, and BTK is just holding on to the lead that Ooh. they have. But, but DA found them. Yeah, you can see Mobazane coming in here. Joy Boss in trouble here, looking for an, an escape. Speedy Lightwheel from the back there, basically doing a ton of damage. Kush very low. Miolo looking for the. Oh, he's not going to be able <laughs> to get it. Big pop up lands. Joy Boss with that Minoan Fury. That actually might have been a mistake. He is going to be able to get away. But I want to say on that last Lord fight, it felt like a, the entirety of Devious activity got caught by the Lord Stomp. They all got popped up. That allowed yep. a huge ability for. for Moba Zane to come in with the retribution and just I want to say a huge mistake for devious activity and now that BTK has the advantage they are just pressing their will it it, it looked good it, you know the fight from DA that, that, that they had it set up it was like a two versus four on the Lord that Hanabi was hitting it to it but you know even with that strategy that was still positive on their end the wild element of the lord knockup hit like three four members and completely knocked you know the side of da out of their tracks and now kush you're getting picked off Ooh, Kush is going to have to use that Denton as welcome to get away from Moba Zane's bonk there. In comes the Black Dragon popping up. Kush, that might be all she wrote. Yato going to have to use that flicker to get away. Divine Judgment lands onto Miello, and he is going to be picked apart by the entirety of BTK. Yeah, the Kaja pick to deal with the, the, the Hanabi was just too good of a setup you know it, it, it was almost like da was kind of dreaming that the hanabi could cheese and potentially work in this <laughs> favor but you know the kaja pick is just a little bit too much now five members onto the mid i don't know if they could defend this yeah they're trying to unfortunately that's going to be joy Baj down yato runs for the hills and this is going to be btk with the win and they are going to be meeting gaming gladiators for the upper bracket finals we, what was this, 21 minutes, and then we had a 10 minute, 30 seconds, and this time around, another short game by the side of BTK. A very convincing win. Again, for a lot of these championship contending teams, we're talking about BTK and Gaming Gladiators, they're definitely showing why they are the top dogs in NACT. A very strong performance by the side of uh, BTK, but you know, honestly, DA in the last match, they did make some changes. They were able to get some advantage early on, and they were able to kind of hold against BTK for quite a bit of some time. But, you know, just with the raw element, the Lord popping up three, four members, the Retri not going in their favor, some unfortunate events added up together for the snowball that BTK has. And BTK, again, the team that with a small lead, they're going to be able to push advantage versus the small lead that DA had unable to convert that into anything you know btk is just the stronger team in this series just for today but da definitely has an opportunity to make up some of that mistakes in the lower bracket and try to go above and beyond and maybe see btk back towards the end right yeah i mean the uh uh devious activity had some hurdles here today uh going up against i mean but btk largely considered one of the uh, the top teams in north america right now and they're showing it here especially with that draft i, I want to say the early game even though devious activity had the advantage they weren't pressing it they weren't getting towers they weren't transitioning those kills into towers uh, against btk which meant when they did get the objective btk was easily able to disengage run back to the tower without losing too much which is the difference between when btk had the advantage in the early game they were able to get the kills uh they were able to get towers down as well which meant when they got those objectives when they got those turtles uh there was nowhere for da to run because they had to run back to their tier twos or all the way back to their tier twos and they were getting uh set up on the way over there it just took one mistake here for devious activity that lord fight pops them up btk able to find the retribution and then close down three members and then it was pretty much gg from there with the lord marching down and only two members from devious act uh devious activity able to defend the base 
Yeah, that was a good setup. I decided BTK the draft just worked out well. We talked about the Kaja being that last pick, two, zero, and seven. I do believe that is the highest uh, KDA, nine out of the 10 kills. So the impact player, Cole World, is just proving points after points. You know, he doesn't die much, doesn't make too much mistakes, has almost the right shot call in almost every opportunity so we'll, we'll definitely have to see how they face up against a team like gaming gladiators next weekend but you know it, it's still a pretty good performance uh from both of these teams just btk just kind of coming out on top now rich guy basic coming through 800 gold per minute highest damage dealt from basic again it's the carry pick right this is a pick where you get a lot of the gold a golden staff a dhs and you are on it you're able to just shred through anyone of course highest damage dealt goes to him sandbags uh mobile zane able to pick that up and you know the assist person nicolette is able to take that trophy yeah even here i mean eh, not too big of a difference kill participation more on the side of kush but uh uh both of these guys are kind of doing their job i want to say kush especially in the lead for the early game you could you see what a successful draft does and how much pressure it alleviates especially in that early game where kush was missing all of his retries in the first two games here able to find the first re for uh, first three retries against those turtles uh out retreating zane there we take a look here at the damage dealt uh swooping in based with uh, 46,000 there. Nicolette, uh, I want to say the, the standard uh, for mages right now. And you were, you're you absolutely correct. You hit the button uh, you, uh, you hit the button on the nose with when it comes to uh, how she likes to play. She plays a very utility Support. mage. Gets that, uh, gets that slow. Gets those utility items first to help out. She's not looking to do a lot of damage. She's looking to do a lot of CC to kind of facilitate a lot of those kills for the team. And does an, an excellent job at that. <laughs> Woo, Liz, I know you got Whoa. something you got against me, huh? <laughs> Tell it to me now. <laughs> you wait, why don't you talk talk to us about it? Your confidence, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> no, it's a great match coming out from DA. I I I I think they have things that they understand that they have to go back into the drawing board and kind of get the plays because quite honestly btk they were able to get all their members involved in almost every situation we saw milo pop off many times we saw basic pop off many times and cold world just adding that support with moba zane they're just always around each other so i think you know da this time unfortunately they couldn't get the win here going back to the drawing board coming up with some better strategies and maybe fixing up some of their drafts i think they definitely stand a chance but liz the rest of my votes, I'm telling you right now, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening tomorrow. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, guys. Tomorrow, you guys have to be on the watch for UA's predictions and how how successful he is with holding his words up. Now, you guys mentioned a lot during um, the match is that there is a huge difference with BTK's draft when it comes to draft. It seems like Coach Midnight is really doing mm. God's work with BTK with the drafts that they're that they're going in with, right? Well, yeah, it's it's even to the little things like uh, what we've seen. We've seen little examples of it throughout the season, uh, where uh, when uh, gaming gladiators used to just focus down on Zane, where they found it like the easiest thing, just focus Zane, and then we'll just GG the rest. Uh, they're not able to do that anymore. They uh, they did that. They got uh, hit up with Cole World on the Matilda. Uh, we're seeing that uh, if you focus down on Zane, there's going to be whatever pick he has. It's going to be supported by a composition that works well with it so you're gonna have to come up uh, with more and more of an advanced game plan than that and then what we're seeing here i mean uh the cc there it's almost i want to say the drafts there's never a weak point there's never been a time uh, in btk's draft where i'm just like huh well, I, I mean, I guess that'll be all right. Uh, but it's always been like, yes, I understand where this is going. I understand what this is going to help with. Uh, and it's just, it's been a, a very sustained draft. And, and I want to say he's picked it up to, to a new level for BTK. Yeah, no, I mean, you even ain't. even even in just this series, right? There there was opportunity where BTK didn't have too much CC, and Midnight comes out with two solid pickups, right? They see the Hanabi, they prepared against it, they knew exactly what to counter it, and you know, I 
know that uh, you know Kaja is very very good against Hanabi. I don't know if a lot of people do, and you know BTK with the flexibility of putting Cold World at the very end had the opportunity to do so, and I think it's quite beautiful that Midnight's able to come up with a strategy that allows BTK to shine convincingly in uh, the upper bracket here. Exactly. And talking about Cold World, he did land that MVP. So Private, what if you take us through his amazing plays? Oh, man, I'm actually in awe of Cold World. Like I said, uh, he I, he was actually questionable for me when he when he first started because I'm like, this dude has played all these different roles. Is he really going to be ready for this roam? But talking with Midnight, especially yesterday during the round table, he said Cold World possesses something that a lot of different roams don't have, and that is game sense. And that's why he put him onto the main roster. That's why he's been so successful successful with all of these different picks uh, it, to the point where you can't really ban out a lot of his roams because he plays so many and he plays them so well uh, and you can see there from a, a lot of those there he's just uh, and especially being able to, to flex into that Kaja uh, the the comfort that BTK has where it's like okay we can just go ahead throw Cold World in last whatever it is he'll be able to counter it and uh, we'll be able to uh, pretty much uh, go for the sweep here against uh, Devious Activity. And, 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 and it's also quite cool here that, you know, BTK always kind of had this center of attention spotlight towards MOBA Zane. And we've kind of brought it to the life where it's not just Zane's show anymore. It's not just Kobe's show anymore. It's all the players <laughs> that are all being involved in this matchup. The spotlight is not only on him. You forgot Cold World literally has a hero pool of so many things. Nicolette, a power player herself. You can't even have bands to go against basic anymore because you're worried about Zane. You're worried about Cole. You're worried about Nicolette. And then you got Milo here with like an Exborg or like a, a Paquito going full damage or the Benedetta or even the Uranus that got banned out this time around. There's so much focusing points on BTK's lineup. It's hard to find a strategy that just works completely well. And I think that's going to be the story about next week to see how they actually match up and deal with each other. Well, that is the story of next week. But today, the spotlight is still on Moba Zane because we have an interview with the king himself, Zane. Hey, Zane, how are you doing? They finally put me up with Zane. I've been getting Milo too much all this time. <laughs> I'm doing good, you thank feeling? you for asking. Uh, feeling pretty right good. Now, after that. Good? After that victory. Very, very um, strong coming in today. Definitely very good drafting as well as performance for all of your teammates as well. Yeah, I all mean, right, Midnight so. is doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you guys give a lot of confidence to Midnight uh, and his draft. When he comes in with a draft, do you guys just listen to him or do you because he talked about you wanted to play that alpha last weekend. Uh, most of the time we will listen to him, but if we want to have fun, like we'll suggest, we all suggest things, but usually what Midnight says is what we usually go with. Mm -hmm. And that kind of offers you this like backbone support for your team, right? Now, on to some spicy questions. I know you've pulled yourself out of that drama era, but the drama comes with you because this is NA. So first question is your old teammate Yato said last week that you only know three heroes. What's the MOBA Zane's official response to that? Uh, good luck versus <laughs> good luck in the lower bracket, Yato. <laughs> good luck as we, we dropped you into the lower bracket. I love it. Now, we know all the players' cameras are in the same lobby before the games and during the game. So, how was it seeing Baj and Yato again, though? Uh, it feels. I mean, I don't really mind, you know, but it's. I I don't know. Like, I still always talk to them, you know. Like, we're we're decently close. We have our own little group chat of the last uh, MSC lineup that we used to play with. So we're still a little bit close. We still always talk. Mm -hmm. And you, you still wish them the best, right? There's, you're still um, really good friends. And what Yato said, obviously, is a friendly banter, is just trying to, you know, add some spice to our mitts. And for next week's matches, if, say, um, in, the up, in, in the lower bracket with um, Fiends versus DA, you, do you think DA is going to come on top? I think DA will win versus Fiends, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about Area 77 versus Night Horde? 
Is that is that tomorrow? If 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 Night Horde takes again, if Night Horde wins against Bloodhounds and does face Area Seventy Seven, what do you feel about the outcome? I think Area Area Seventy Seven wins that. Hmm. All right, that's Moba Zing's take on the matches next weekend. Now, everyone in the comments has, and I have been wondering as well. You, we haven't seen your stream lately. What's going on with that? Uh, I just wanted to take a bit of a break, you know, because ranked. Well, a lot of the time when I play with this team, it always sends me West Coast, which I really dislike. I was actually planning to start streaming again, like uh, I think two days ago. I just streamed for the first time in like three weeks or something. So I plan to be coming back soon. Just been practicing mm -hmm. and mostly just practicing and relaxing. Mm -hmm. And that's that's showing in your performance. Um, definitely. Congratulations again for your second Savage of the season. Um, it's getting clipped everywhere. And we're, are we going to see more of Alpha in the upcoming matches? There's a, there's a good chance you do. Yeah. Well, guys, look out for that. Now, whoever wins next Saturday will be the first to confirm their ticket to Vegas. How confident will, are you that you're going to be that team? I think all of us are extremely confident that we're going to be going to the finals, but we're still trying to take each team, you know, very seriously. But at the end of the day, I'm 100% mm -hmm. sure that we will be in the finals. Well, I can't say on stream, but you know, we're, we're also rooting for BTK going to the finals. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you streaming again, Zane, and all the best for next week's tournament. All right, thank you. Yo, I, I, all right. I just want to say like the amount of respect that Zane has for Midnight. It's, it's, it's turning a new leaf for North America, in my opinion. We never really had a lot of the respects for uh, outside help, like managers, coaches. Uh, and, you know, this time around, it definitely seems like BTK is relying on that. It's not necessarily relying, but it works well. Like one plus one equals like three or four, and they're getting like exponentially good rewards and benefits and trust onto each other. And the way that he was talking about with Midnight, it's so beautiful. Like, you know, hey, we will follow what he wants us to do. Even though sometimes we want to have fun, he still makes the right call and we respect it. And that was completely different from, let's say, like a M3 Mobile Zane. So props to that guy, man. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> very interesting because this question has come up since since the beginning, uh, oh, since that M3 <laughs> run of BTK is like, oh, North America needs a coach. But then the subsequent question is, especially for a team like BTK, what kind of coach do you get that the team members will respect their opinion? Mm -hmm. uh, and it took... It took it took a few seasons. Midnight had to uh, beat Mobazane uh, with uh, Avalon uh, in that uh, in that last series. Uh, maybe garnered a little bit of respect, and to the point that where we're at right now, I want to say that that is something that I really took from this interview as well. Is that just the respect he has? Uh, uh, you know, we have a say. Uh, if we want, if there's some picks that we want to say uh, that we want to that we want to play out there for having fun, but ultimately whatever he says goes, and that that's just an amount of trust to have in a coach like that. That not even that he talks about. Oh, you know, we kind of go back and forth about certain options. No, it's just what Midnight says goes, and uh, that's what we're gonna have out in the in the draft. It's just it's it's very interesting, and it's it's a new leaf for for some teams here in North America, especially with the success. Uh, not just the success, because I, I want to say I don't think there was anybody in. North America that was going to doubt the type of success BTK was at, but the growth that we've seen from them in such a short amount of time from the beginning of the season to where they are now, where I really think that they have kind of hit their stride as a team, including uh, Midnight's coaching with them. It's all become uh, begun to synergize very well. That's beautiful. I mean, it's Coaches, that's why we have a coach. I mean, football teams have a coach and then that's the coach's job is to strategize. And then it's the players who performs with their mechanics and to execute the strategy. But it seems like for NA, we're not used to having a coach. And with see with BTK, how strong a good coach makes a team. I mean, Midnight had to not audition yet. his way up from the different teams to finally land to the tried and true of BTK. And so excited to see how they do next week. Now. 
before we get into what's going to happen next week with um, and tomorrow with the bracket, let's take a look at today's matches. Well, maybe I think it's because Taylor Swift launched her album this week. Today's <laughs> matches were unexpectedly swift. -y. We heard the GOAT and expected Area 77 to put up a strong fight against UG, yet it seems like we forgot that while the aliens are marching forward, the gladiators are also improving. And for DA versus BTK, it seemed like Midnight adds the missing piece of the puzzle and has put up with all the amazing drafts, exactly what they need to, to land that victory. And they executed the draft perfectly, landing us a 3-0 sweep as well. Now, for the upcoming matches tomorrow, what do you guys feel? Bra uh, Private, take us through what's gonna happen with the, all the bracket runs. Well, this is that was not the only chance for Area 77 in devious activity as they're going to be dropping down to round two to face the winners uh, tomorrow. It's going to be Fiends taking on Legacy. The, tomorrow is going to be a sad day for a lot of teams. You got Fiends taking on Legacy and the Night Horde taking on the Bloodhounds. The winners of those matches are going to face Devious Activity or Area 77. And unfortunately for these teams, I believe there's going to be four teams going home tomorrow. So the road ends for four teams tomorrow uh, and we, we continue on. <laughs> We, we definitely continue on. I know tomorrow, you know, Private talked about it. It's a little bit sad for a lot of the people. We've seen a lot of these teams grow throughout the regular season, especially in the round robins. A lot of the teams we root for, some upsets and spicy matches. But, you know, with all good things, likely comes to a small end. It's a little bittersweet. But tomorrow is going to be quite the day, especially for a lot of these young teams, Liz. Yeah, I mean, this season, it felt like we were pam we were really watching a show. We're pampering each team up. We're building, like, who we like and then what part do we like about which player, teams. We, especially, we have these interviews after every match, which makes us bond more with the players. And then we start to feel like it's never ending. Like, we're seeing them back and back every weekend, and we don't realize that tomorrow, that tomorrow is when everything starts crashing. We go from <laughs> eight teams all the way from regular season into two weeks of playoffs, and then suddenly there's four. So that's mm. a huge change, and it's kind of it's, it's an emotional journey for many of the viewers out there because we're building all this emotion for the teams. We saw Fiends have their Dark Horse story. We saw Night Horse have their Dark Horse story. We saw Area 77 take a game from BTK, and tomorrow only four teams remain, and that's the beauty of the competition. Yeah, uh, an emotional road indeed. Um, but that's that's how things happen here uh, with the playoffs. We're gonna have to say goodbye to some of them. But uh, tonight, I mean, the the two I want to say uh, two top teams, a gaming a gladiators uh, and BTK, cementing themselves as uh, two of the best in North America. I, I'm sure there were uh, there weren't. A lot of doubters, I want to say. I want to say a lot of people from the beginning, they've got a lot of fan base. They've been pretty dominant here in North America for multiple seasons as well. Uh, but I want to say renewed vigor in both of these teams. We saw the, the punch out level uh, now for gaming gladiators. They brought something like just super fresh and and new and just really precise with their gameplay and their victories here tonight and then btk the 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 faith and the uh the the abilities in their draft uh, when it comes to midnight and their coaching here yeah i mean it's 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 definitely gonna be a strong showing this time around especially with the rise of the impact of coaches i think a lot of the teams especially in terms of the next season could be looking for a lot more outside help and i think that makes north america a lot more competitive makes it a lot more organized and you know we've evolved and we've gone from kind of like no coaches into now relying on coaches having these strategies well put in place multiple teams championship worthy like we've grown into such a respectable community and especially with this nact coming through like it's been quite a wonderful event so far again it's a little bit bittersweet it's a little bit sad making me want to shed a little bit tears but still we have plenty <laughs> of matches coming through well whether it's tears of joy or tears of um, sadness for tomorrow 
any last words you want to say to the winning teams today or the teams that are dropping to lower bracket tomorrow? This is the time to kind of pull out all the stops. A lot of people are, are, are kind of monkeying around with a lot of those roster changes. Uh, drafting <laughs> has become a big thing here right now. Uh, uh, we've seen what a lot of those outside the box kind of picks have. We saw how, how I want to say, mildly successful Devious Activity was here against BTK when it came to some of those. But, I mean, right now, uh, this is the last chance. Uh, we were talking about it. Uh, losers, it's not just dropping to the lower bracket now tomorrow. Tomorrow, losers are going home. So if there's something that you've been meaning to try, if there's some practice you need to get in, uh, tomorrow is the day to really shine for it because it's your last chance uh, uh, to find yourself a seat in Vegas. And, you know, for me, I just want to let you guys know that the Masha was open every single game. <laughs> um, the Natan also has been a great pick. Um, I do want to see some of the Arlots and Louis action. Um, it, 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 a lot of these teams, in order for them to progress into the next level, they got to try a lot of different things. And it's already been proven overseas that these are significant winning compositions. It's, it, it, you can build very unique physical and magic heavy composition that's extremely hard to defend. And I think for North America to get onto that next level, that is the direction that we should be going. And we are, right? We are going into that direction. But once again, right? Masha, let open, guys, please. Masha and Natan, <laughs> try it out. Guys, listen to our <laughs> coaches right here. <laughs> I mean, well but, said, guys. Mm -hmm. You gave very um, critical advice to our players tomorrow. And I'm sure whoever's listening will see some of these picks come up tomorrow. But that wraps up as up for the upper bracket series of week two for the playoffs. I'm so happy to be joined with these lovely people to cast this very exciting matches. And for the fact that the other three have to be left with the sorrow and the sadness <laughs> from tomorrow's <laughs> matches of people actually going home. But tomorrow we do have losers round one as well as losers quarterfinals and four teams unfortunately will end their spring season journey and hop on the train ride home. But that's how the, the speed that the NACT spring is going and we wish best of luck for all the teams tomorrow and the three of us will see you next week.